All right, here in the studios, it is 12 o'clock, day is. two, it's Tuesday yeah. of the 14th annual Owen TV Food Drive and Fun Drive for Fish. I'm Ian Locke, Executive Director here at Orion Neighborhood Television. And again, on a Tuesday, it's Terry Stiles, hey. uh, Station Manager up at OCTV. Right, Welcome Oxford back. Television. Yep, happy to be here. Uh, Thank you. This is, so uh, appreciate it's it. It's so fun to have you in the studio, and we had a good time last year. Yeah. And so today is kind of uh, the theme of our programming is community. And uh, last year was kind of like community media mm -hmm. focus, but mm -hmm. we're going to have the DDA director yes. in from Oxford. Yep. We're going to learn about all the, and her assistant in. We're going to learn mm -hmm. all about. Yep, she's got a lot to say, all about uh, Oxford downtown area. Lots going on there. You guys are hopping like we're hopping yeah, down we here are. in Orion <laughs> and uh, having partnerships not only with the DDAs in both cities, but we mm -hmm. have partnerships yes. together. You, so our two it. studios work together. We yeah. share programming, and the cool mm -hmm. thing. You can watch it for the first time. Yes. Up on OCTV. Right. So you, your people in Oxford are watching us. They too. are. Yep. We've been airing it all day yesterday, and it will be all week long. People will be able to watch all of this on Roku and um, AT and T app, yep. and Apple app. Any app that they have, we're <laughs> streaming to it. Yep, and we're on there so too, fun. right? It's, it's amazing the technology how it's come around. Uh, for us as community media oh, um, directors and producers, right? Yeah. How it, it, we are global, and we are in the, all the commercial mm -hmm. entities mm -hmm. uh, that you would see: Roku, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazon Fire, Apple TV. Just like you said, it's right. pretty amazing. And YouTube Live, so we're on YouTube Live and Facebook mm -hmm. Live as well. I think you guys yes. are spitting us out to we are YouTube Facebook. As well. You yeah. can't miss us. We're everywhere, right? And so, the great thing yeah. is, um, I, and I hear from grandparents all the time because we cover sports live. Mm -hmm. We do streaming live with um, the Oxford sports. But the grandparents are contacting us <laughs> saying, we're watching you at the same time they're playing, which yep. is so nice. And they're in Florida yes. or California or Arizona. They're not, they can't be in this area. It's so fun that the technology is changing, and you're helping us with that. Thank you. You've kind of <laughs> kicked <laughs> us and pushed us into this century, and yeah, I appreciate well, that. Yeah, well, you know, each center has its own level of technology yeah. and uh, updates and that sort of thing are on different uh, time scales, right? And we, yeah. when we moved into the new studio, it was 2012. It's not new <laughs> anymore, but it still feels new, yeah, for, right? right? It still does. It does. It feels and the, new to the, me. And uh, the, the equipment is always changing over. Oh, and, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're working together and we work with other community centers across the state of Michigan mm -hmm. right. to try to preserve community media, mm -hmm. right? right? So again, just if you're just joining us for the first time, this is our 12 to 2 lunch break session. And Terry's with me all day today yeah. uh, for this, uh, this lunch break. And our collection goal is was six thousand yeah. uh, dollars. We had an amazing um, donation mm -hmm. of five thousand dollars yesterday yeah. um, wow. by what, Bill and Pam. Bill and Pam from mm -hmm. Macomb Heating and Plumbing Supply. Right. I have to make sure I get that wow. right. They're a five-day sponsor, mm -hmm. and we can't thank them enough for the, it's. Uh, it, it blew our minds. Yeah, that was kind of last minute yesterday afternoon, right? We knew they were coming in with a uh, with a donation because they're a sponsor, but do. we had no mm -hmm. idea it was going to be five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So that mm -hmm. really propelled us across that six thousand dollar line. But we're going to up that now. That doesn't mean the yeah. food drive stops, right? right? So right. Um, currently, I think our collection co totals are, as you can see, about eighty two hundred up on the screen. Yeah. Which is yay. We're yeah. so happy. Wow. So before we get into some fun stuff, like a live look in mm -hmm. over at GLAC, we're going to say thank you to our sponsors for mm -hmm. today. Here's a quick video yeah. uh, showcasing them. Right. All of us at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. Today's portion of the 2024 Owen TV Food Drive is brought to you by Madison Heights Plumbing and Heating Supply, located at 719 East Mandolin Avenue in Madison Heights. The family-owned business has been serving the Detroit metro area for over 30 years. Madison Heights Plumbing and Heating Supply is supporting the food drive for a second year and is a five-day sponsor. In addition to the Owen TV Food Drive, they proudly support other charitable events and organizations, such as Toys for Tots, Bottomless Chest, and St. Jude's Children's Hospital. For more information, give them a call at 248-588-4690. 
or visit their website, madisonheightsplumbingsupply.com. Northern Wholesale Flooring, located at 118 Indian Wood Road in Lake Orion. Northern Wholesale Flooring has been an active member of the community for over 38 years. They are a returning partner of the ONTV Food Drive and are a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can visit their website, nflooring.com. Ohana Wealth Advisory. This is Ohana Wealth Advisory's second year supporting the Food Drive, and they are a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can give them a call at 248-246-8080. Kroger, located at 3097 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township. This year, Kroger is a five-day sponsor, thanks to a generous $500 donation to the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Kroger, visit their website, kroger.com, or give them a call at 248-393-0765. Meyer of Lake Orion, located at 1107 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Meyer is a year-round supporter of the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry, collecting food pantry donations through their Simply Give program. They are a five-day sponsor of the ONTV Food Drive with a charitable $500 contribution. For more information, visit their website, Meyer.com. M3 Investments, located at 990 North Main Street in Royal Oak. Having a plan that is designed around your goals and financial situation can help you successfully navigate the risks you are likely to face. Whether you're just starting out, thinking about retirement, or just retired, Christine can help. For more information about M3 Investments, you can give them a call at 248-543-3400. Galling Buick GMC, located at 1491 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Galling is a longtime supporter of the food drive, returning this year as a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can visit their website at gallingbuickgmc.com. The North Oakland Democratic Club, chartered by the Michigan Democratic Party, serving the North Oakland County area. The NODC is a returning sponsor for the food drive, giving $200 toward our final goal. For more information about the North Oakland Democratic Club, visit their website at nodcmi.com. And by Costco, located at 400 Brown Road in Auburn Hills. Costco is a returning supporter of the ONTV Food Drive this year. They have given $200 to the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Costco, check out their website, costco.com. All right, want to thank our sponsors once again. Without them, a lot of them. Oh boy, we have Gosh. a hard time uh, meeting that 6,000 goal. Yeah. And of course, Amazing. the one big donation of $5,000 yeah. yesterday Amazing. is just huge. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a, a fun little live look in coming up, like we mentioned, but we have a lot of business to take care of. Why are we here in the studio? Getting those sponsors, well, getting the, the sponsors, money. Well, the sponsors, donations, <laughs> getting the money. But we're also talking about fish uh, and how yep. they help the community, right? right? Mm -hmm. So we know that uh, fish is up on Lapeer Road, just north of us. Right. Uh, just in the... the south the, Oxford. Yep. South of Oxford. By right. Collier Lanes and Drainer right. Road and mm -hmm. right there, just right? Just south of Drainer, right. Yep, you can't miss it. A wonderful facility. Mm -hmm. And uh, why are we having our food drive this time of and year? You know, you they know. really, they always run out around this time of year after the holidays. And, and it's especially rough this year for some reason. So it's really nice that you met that $6,000 goal, but it certainly doesn't hurt to go beyond that because their shelves are empty. Yeah, and absolutely. And they always are about this time of year. They are, and the, the run on the holiday mm -hmm. were big, mm -hmm. and we heard something for the first time that they actually turned some families away at the holidays because yeah. if they had more in, it would have really just wiped out mm -hmm. for I want to say for everybody, right. but it was just one of those they stunned could not 14 years anymore. we've never heard mm -hmm. of anybody being turned away. Right. So what are some of the needs this time of year? It changes every year, and the needs at fish, again, you know, mm, uh, it's warm summer, mm. 
warm, hearty foods. Yeah. Uh, we like to share some of the uh, the needed items if we could. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always forget them off the top of my head. But oh, there they go. We got the graphic up. There you it is. Take it away, Terry. So they need some canned pineapple, canned mandarin oranges, chili, beef stew, sloppy joe mix, ketchup, mustard, canned chicken, chunky soup, which sounds good, baked <laughs> beans, taco shells, cake mix, and feminine products. Don't forget the bathroom stuff that they need. Shampoos, and soap, toothpaste. toothpaste. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Even uh, school supplies are welcome. We got a nice yeah. case of Bic pens uh, donated yesterday. So those go to, to kids in need and uh, the families in need just to do daily things. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about fish too is that uh, the dignity in which they show yeah. their clients, right? You walk in, yeah. it's like a grocery store. Yeah. You pick up the items that you need mm -hmm. and with, you know, specific to your family. And it's not a crate. It is a you pick what yeah. is uh, what you need for your family. Right. You you know better than anybody of what your family likes to right. eat. Right, and so you get that independence. Besides, you feel like you're depending on somebody when you're in a situation Correct. such as that. So you you do have that independence. Not to mention the people that volunteer there. Yes are wonderful yep. and they act like your family when you go yep. in there they're and really great to the people and no judgment no not at all and uh, they're, they're from all over the community yep. uh, volunteering at they fish are. all the time so yes we're kind of up against a little clock thing because we have a good feature coming to you mm -hmm. on the great the great lakes athletic club in just a moment so we're going to step away uh, to show you some highlights of some of our sponsors mm -hmm. and why and how they help in our community um and with a food drive and all that good stuff so all take nice. a look at this yep Dowling Buick GMC has been serving the Lake Orion community for more than 40 years. We here at ONTV would like to thank them for helping to sponsor our food drive benefiting Oxford Orion Fish. Of course, giving back to the community is not a new concept for the dealership. Dowling Buick GMC hosts several car shows throughout the year with each one helping a different community organization. We raise money for various charity groups throughout the year. Each show has, has a charity. This this uh, is the uh, Orion uh, Veterans Memorial down here on Lapeer Road, uh, raising money for that memorial today. Um, and throughout the year, we pick different charities and we try to uh, you know mix it up and, and keep the money in the community. I can tell you that last year, with our shows, we raised almost $30,000. It's a community we all live in, and I live here in Lake Orion as well. And it's the community that supports us and our business. We always want to try and give back as best that we can. I'm blessed as far as having great employees and great customers and all the rest, but it's also a blessing to, to be in a business that can also be considered your hobby and your fun part of it as well, because I love cars. And every year, Galling Buick GMC hosts Lake Orion's biggest party of the year. The who's who of Lake Orion are invited to come out to the Holly Jolly Folly, a massive fundraiser that helps make the Orion Lighted Parade an annual spectacular that old and young alike look forward to every holiday season. You know what, it's fun. It, you know, the bottom line is it's fun and it's really fun to do things in our community, for our community, and uh, this is really what it's all about, right? It, it becomes grassroots stuff, the community comes together, and um, it's it's really great. And you know we've been through a couple, couple tough years, and and this is this is a celebration coming out of some of that stuff. I can't thank John Cooper and Gollings enough. They are not only the presenting sponsor of the parade, they also pay for everything here. Um, so it's a it's a great event. I know John Cooper loves to do it, and we love having it here and the family here at Gollings. I mean we couldn't have done it without them. I mean we had. Our oil change kids, our mechanics, uh, guys in the body shop, we're all here today setting up, tearing down, cleaning up. Uh, can't have enough help from the Tally Gardens, they're doing a great job. So we love it and we love doing it here at Gollings. Um, so as my Golling cap is, as far as I know, we're going to be doing this for a while. For more information, visit GollingBuickGMC.com. And again, we'd like to thank them for helping to support the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. Again, uh, thank you to our sponsor with Galling. Yeah. Um, they've been with us almost from the beginning. They used mm -hmm. to give us free oil changes as a oh. raffle prize, <laughs> oh, which no. were hugely popular. People Heck were yeah. like, oh, 
oil <laughs> changes and they wanted to win they win multiple oil changes and it was oh, kind of great so yeah Dougal Canis over there he's done a great mm -hmm. job and um uh, he, he is everywhere in the Orient area from the parade group to fireworks yeah. to mm -hmm. you name it any charity yeah. and on tv he loves us yeah, so we nice love him cornerstone and for the community absolutely yeah. and a great yeah, organization mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. um are we ready joey okay I, I hear fun. the record he says we're ready <laughs> uh we have a live feed coming from the great lakes athletic club if you're if you're not aware the orient township purchased the property at pennies mm -hmm. on the dollar and now are molding it this facility that's been in the Orient area for a number of years. Right. Uh, full disclosure, my family is a member over there prior to purchase. Uh -huh. And Jenny Body is joining us from, uh, she's Orient Township employee and communications maven and a good pal of ours. And so she's there, uh, you see her on the screen. Jenny, how are you? I'm good, Ian. How are you? Thanks for having me today. <laughs> well, we're doing great. And uh, you always help out with the food drive. You and uh, uh, your old cohort in crime, Dave, used to come in here and ambush us during the food drive. So now we actually had something scheduled uh, to make this happen and make it work. So uh, everybody watching at home, this is going to be a first. We're going to do a live tour really of a facility yeah. with uh, Terry and I here asking questions and you just mm -hmm. showing us what the heck's going on over there because so much is happening at uh, Great Lakes Athletic Club. And uh, let me turn it over to you and just let's just get underway and show us what's what's what the heck's going on over there. <laughs> sure. Well, to start, I'm in the vestibule right now, so you're not seeing much, but <laughs> I promise you will in just a minute. So Township did take ownership come late December. So we're a little over a month into the um, process here. And I want to give you guys a little tour. All right. So firstly, I'm going to come in here by the front desk. I've got... Chelsea and Aaron with hey. me. Hey guys. Hey Hello. guys. What's up, so, Hey guys. Aaron is our parks director and you're the assistant parks director is Chelsea here. So guys, tell us a little bit about the facility. Just give us a little rundown sure. before we take a tour. Uh, I guess yeah. Aaron's head's cut off. Yeah. <laughs> there oh, we go. Okay. Aaron's a little taller Live than TV. Yeah. Uh, it's too tall. So as, we're, as Jenny said, we're about a little little over a month in to take an ownership of Great Lakes Aquatic Club. Uh, it's been a great, I would say, smooth transition, fairly smooth. Um, but everything's going well. We've been making some improvements. Chelsea's assistant director, she's been essentially running operations here and has been doing a fantastic job. Um, it's a beautiful facility. We have amazing staff here and amazing patrons. We're super excited to make this just a, another gem of the community for recreational purposes, uh, making it available to the whole community. Um, just last night at the board meeting, we signed a um, like a design study, a feasibility study nice. with a very reputable firm. They've done buildings throughout Michigan, uh, rec centers, redesigns. So our intentions of this would be to make it more of a recreation community center we're keeping uh, the athletic aspect to it and just enhancing. Like Orion does, we pride ourselves on beautiful recreational amenities, improving the community, improving health, wellness, social well-being, and that's what we're here to do. And we're gonna keep working for you, Orion. Um, I'll stop talking because <laughs> she's, she's the brainchild of this well, thing. Well, I, I do have a question for you guys. I mean, Aaron, you and I have uh, spoken many times, of course, over the years. And when this project came on, we're like, you were smiling ear to ear and we're going, whoa, the potential. It's easy right. to see the potential of that facility. Right. And the good news of the numbers of memberships that, uh, you know, it's people are going, ooh, this is interesting. And so people are signing up for the memberships and uh, it's easy to do, right? I mean, it, you just walk in the door and say, hey, uh, let's get going. You don't have to wait for everything to be altered or changed. Okay. You're open, it's it's happening right now. Yeah, essentially we've, we've never closed the doors. So you can go right on our website, orientparks.com and sign up for a membership. Um, residents, there's a, a slight discount there, um, but we're, we're super excited. There's the memberships, uh, when we took over, we're at a point and we've exceeded that. So it's very encouraging to see the community latch on and see the vision and come along with us on the journey. And I promise 
like we always do, we will deliver and we will be great financial stewards of the township dollars. We're going to have the best quality product and people in the community have been asking for an indoor space mm -hmm. for quite a few years. Uh, the last, I don't even know how many community surveys we've done. People have wanted indoor recreation, especially for the winter and there's no better place than this, which you guys will see a little bit more later. So, yeah. All right. Donate, everybody. Keep donating. Yes. All right. And I apologize. I'm going to be walking the camera around a little bit. So, I'm shaky. That's me. Just watch, yeah. Just watch the headroom. Just watch the headroom. You're good. Yeah. All, right. All right. We are going to take a look inside the child's um, yes. children's center over here, which wow. not a lot of gyms. Yeah, they fabulous. Don't. Wow. Yeah, we'll see what this size is. Really Such big. a bonus for people. I don't think so, right? Oh, right. Yeah, we are probably the only you're going to see. So, yeah, you walk into this facility and right away you're greeted with our staff here who will help you get your child into the center. Um, Jessica is being you know, like an upset kid right now. <laughs> No. Um, it's really friendly. Come on, come on. Over here. Come on. <laughs> Dragging them all oh, in. There she is. <laughs> oh, is that? Yeah, sorry for the crying. Do you just Hi. want to tell them a little bit about the Children's Center? Oh, so we um, take children from three months to 11 years. You need Whoa. a junior membership in order wow. to have them come in. We have an infant and toddler room for the babies, which is three months to about a year, depending on when they're walking really well. I didn't know it was that young. Um, yeah. We have lots of activities and toys. What else do you want to mean? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's great. That's, great. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a good highlight of the child care center here. So this is a wonderful spot. So I have a question. We, have, come in, we, in their kids. we do okay. have a question. So uh, when you sign your children up, is it something that you have to sign up for like Monday through Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Or is it like a drop-in? How is the drop-in? How does that work? Okay. So if you have an infant, you will need to um, schedule an appointment, and you do that through the app. Okay. If they're a year or older, you just drop in, and wow. our hours are Monday through Saturday from 9 until 1, wow. and Monday through Thursday from 7 until 9. Mm. Bravo. Good to well know. Well done. Yeah. Luckily, I have an I, uh, I have an 18 year old, so I won't be dropping in. But you know, <laughs> all right. You do have to have a membership with Great Lakes Athletic Club, but it's okay. the nine dollars a month oh, wow. for all your children and your family. So Gosh, that's great. Very very reasonable. That's great because we know that it's it's rare in facilities like this mm -hmm. to have that that uh, amenity yeah. um, for families, especially you know working you know during the day. Yeah. You grab your kids, come home. Drop them off. It's really rare. Even and just to go to the grocery store, <laughs> you can drop your kids well, off. Well, I don't know if it, yeah, I don't know if you shop. can do that. Yeah, no, we you have to be in the facility. You have to be in the facility. Oh darn! Yeah. 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 I was yeah. hoping. Although we do have moms who go sit in the cafe and sure. you could, I guess, order your groceries yeah. through your app okay. on your phone and then leave and go pick them up afterward. Yeah. Very yeah, cool. That's great. Very I, cool. Yeah. Ideas. Uh, I know. I'm loving Thank this. Thank you. So. That's All awesome, right. you guys. What's next? We've, we've got more to see. Yep, so here, let's one more do this. Aaron wants to turn this around to make it. Oh, hang on. How do I do Live this? Live TV, right? <laughs> I know. Here we go. All right, Aaron. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. So, so yeah, this is the. If you walk through here, you would scan into the um, front desk area. Someone from the staff would help you with that. Um, and then once you're in, you would go and start working out. We have our big fitness center. This is all of our cardio equipment. So there's treadmill loads, bikes. Wow, look at that. Equipment bikes. Have you ever been in there? No. Stair uh, steppers. I mean, we literally have every piece of yeah. cardio equipment. Wow, rowing oh, yeah. machine and multiple, multiple. So you're never waiting to get out of the so we, uh, so Terry, did, I have another right question. Terry had a question about um, membership. Do you sign up? Or can you pay per month, or is that a whole year membership? How does that work? Uh, we're going to answer that when we get to the basketball courts because oh. it's a little, it's a little loud here, but. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, All right. Yeah, we don't hear the noise in there. There's a lot of activity oh, going on in that okay. section. So. Oh, yeah. But look at all the varieties. You have ellipticals. You have the treadmills, stair steppers. Wow. You name it, uh, a lot, uh, the rowing machines, that's new. So I haven't been <laughs> in in a couple years since pre-pandemic. <laughs> but yeah, uh, newer machines and the basketball courts are great. My goodness. What a facility for this community. 
and pennies on the dollar, right? I mean, it yeah. was in receivership, and Jeez. they saw it and said, let's go, and made the investment. Wise so, move. All right, tell us where we're at. So this is the basketball court. All right, let's be in this way. Let's so um, we have two courts. Yep, we have people playing right now. We have volleyball courts. Um, we also, it has lines for pickleball. So you can do three courts of pickleball as well, um, which are... Man, I'm assuming or going to do yeah, yes, yeah. it's definitely we love their pickleball. Future activity, we definitely <laughs> want to have pickleball. But that's people go crazy for pickleball. I still don't yeah. know how to play. I need to learn because fast growing sport. Everyone talks about it. Is yeah. it is blowing up? Everybody loves uh, it. That's they had a question yeah. about memberships yeah. monthly. So, yeah. Yep, um, we do have all different types of memberships. You can uh, do an annual. You can do uh, month to month, or you can. Um, depending on if you want your family, a student. All of our pricing is on orionparks.com under Green Lakes Athletic Club. You'll oh, okay. See it. Just mm -hmm. like this, the chart. I mean, there's a lot. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, but if you're a resident and want to have your family, um, it would be around $100, depending on how many people you have. Oh, for a family. Um, Unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so, so nine residents? Because it's a big facility. You get a lot. There's not um, so you can bring your kids okay. here, um, teach them play basketball that's there's, their thing there's dedicated family time on the floor too right yes. yep so, there is wow. yep. yeah wow. so we'll take you through the weight room and while they're moving us to the weight room, just if you're tuning in for the first time, you're watching the 14th annual ON TV Food Drive for Fish. We're live over at the Great Lakes Athletic Club, recently purchased by Orion Township. And we're getting a firsthand tour about the people in the know of what the heck's <laughs> going on over there and all the facilities and amenities. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, this is great. Uh, we haven't been live on the food drive in a number of years with a remote location. So Zoom, hello Zoom, this yeah. is great. So you guys yeah. take it over. What are we looking at now? Okay, so right now we're in the free weight section, which is one of my favorite events. And you can see we actually have quite a few people out. Yeah, lunch it's definitely busy. Yeah, so uh, this is where you would go if you were just comfortable using free weight. Definitely recommend you know what you're doing. There's a lot of really great equipment here. Um, but if you don't know what you're doing and this kind of overwhelms you, we do have personal training work we'll get into. So someone yeah. can off wow. Let's take a walk and come through that area a little bit more. Come on, guys. I'd be very embarrassed if I was working out right now and everybody was watching this <laughs> uh, Yeah, me too. It'd be, I can't even lift the bar. <laughs> Those are not I mean, plants, like right? They they're really good at it. Yeah, they are really good at it. They are really good at it, so. Yeah, and the size of the facility, you really don't oh, get a yeah. feel. And I mean, this walkthrough yeah. really shows well, you the helping. size. Yeah, right. Um, is the Olympic weight room. You don't see this in a lot of fitness centers. But this room is strictly for those that know how you're lifting. There's also the observant floor, so you can drop your weights and you don't feel like you're making a ton of noise. Oh, so right. Definitely unique to our area. You're not going to see that a lot. So, and then we also have our personal training area, which we can move over a little bit. But I was a member and I didn't even know that room was there. <laughs> and of course, all the equipment is there for you to use if you want to use it. So they've got the TRX up there too, which is really nice. I don't know if you guys have ever tried that. Ian, have you ever tried a TRX? Um, no, but my wife has done it for a number of years in the classes and loves it. The uh, oh. with the straps and everything, oh, and yeah, she yeah, really, yeah. really liked yep. that. That that uh, yep. was a huge draw. Mm -hmm. I I love the TRX. You should really mm -hmm. try it one day. Yep. All right, I'm going over to the rock wall, which is also a really great amenity oh, that gosh. we hope to get up and running here. Uh, so I'm excited for this. Yeah. I'm trying mm -hmm. to try this out. So. Sure. Yeah. I actually want to race Chris on this, and I think I'll kick your butt. So I'm just, I'm throwing that out there, Chris. If you're watching, I'm, the, I'm up. Are you ready? <laughs> throwing the gauntlet down. I'm throwing it down right now. Very cool. All right. Yep. And, we, right, and as we're moving on to the next bit, the rock wall, we always saw, like, uh, uh, kids and their parents on it and having mm. a good time with it, like the younger uh, Late elementary school mm -hmm. age and middle mm -hmm. schoolers love that rock wall. Yeah, they turned and, into little uh, they had straps and harnesses yeah. for safety and they're climbing amazing. it and stuff. It was really cool. They're amazing on that thing. They're, they're no fear. <laughs> well, I I wouldn't do it. No. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go upstairs now and take a look because oh, we have a whole other floor to this place. Wow. Yep. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. Go first so that way you're not... Yep, so the upper level uh, indoor track, which is great, mm -hmm. right? Especially in the cold winter months. And then some more as it, uh, uh, weight machines and uh, different uh, rooms that you can have classes in and such. So that track, is that for walking as well as anybody that's trying to practice for the marathon? Or how does yes. that track work? Yep. Yeah. A so walking track. Oh, yeah, there she is right there. There's walking, jogging, and passing. Okay. And then you can see on the wall, every other day it's rotated. So oh. it'll go clockwise, counterclockwise. Uh, kind of gives you a, Even uh, different movements okay. on your hips yeah. and joints. Yeah. Very good. Right. Now we're at the, what are these called, Chelsea? Oh, I already forget. Stabilize. It's where you're using the pin. Yeah, you're using a pin. Not as hardcore as downstairs okay. where you have to mm -hmm. physically lift up your weights here. All your weights are on a stack, and you can take the pin and move it down to whatever you prefer mm -hmm. for this side uh -huh. or the weights. The whole body, you can still work everything, and you can still work it just as effectively as downstairs. It's just a little bit more controlled. Yeah, and you can see the rock wall stretching all the way up to the oh second my floor goodness. up there. That thing's amazing, right? So if you really like free weights, you have it. If you want more controlled weights, like I like using these the weight machines upstairs because I wasn't quite stable enough, and sure. once I got my strength right. up, then I moved down to the free weight. Yeah, okay. Great. This is one of our studios. This is our biggest studio. Uh, this is for a lot of group fitness. Okay. We're going to run into a couple of our staff here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. That is big. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize how large that uh, that instruction space <laughs> is. Hello. <laughs> so Regan is in charge of all of our group fitness and personal trainers. And Maria is a coach, personal trainer, group fitness instructor, and she's our marketing director. So ladies, you want to talk about personal training? Sure. So personal training, it can be intimidating to come into the gym and feel like you're overwhelmed, you don't know what to do. But our trainers have your back. We have awesome personal trainers. Whether you are a senior citizen looking to improve your balance, your bone mm -hmm. density, okay. your blood pressure, or you're an athlete looking to make the next level in sports, we've got a person for you. So if you have questions, reach out. We're happy to answer. And a lot of our trainers are also on our awesome group fitness team. Yep, that's what I was going to say. You'll also see a lot of our uh, personal trainers on our group fitness schedule in the class of like circuit. Cadence, I push cadence on um, movement and mobility, yep. TRX, which is right in our other studios. We're just talking about We're that. Just, TRX yeah. is an awesome class, yeah. Um, but you'll see a lot of our trainers there. That's a great way to go introduce yourself. And then we also have a phenomenal cast of other group fitness instructors, too. So definitely pick up a group fitness schedule. We have them at the front desk. We have them on um, the Oregon Parks page. Um, we're doing a group fitness event coming up uh, next week on Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. 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 We do our Valentine's and bring your significant other, but it'll be right in this studio here, Studio okay. 8. That we're so I have a quick um, question for you guys on yeah. some of the classes and things. Uh, so like I was telling Jenny and the crew, uh, my family was a member there pre-pandemic and we saw Taekwondo. You know, classes oh. in that space. We mm -hmm. saw yoga going on. Oh, I mean, nice. yeah. it's not oh, yeah. just high intensity mm -hmm. or you know, it, there, it's for all ages, all skill levels, all you know, for everybody really. Absolutely, and that goes for any of the classes. So even if you see a class on the schedule that seems like a little bit intimidating, just introduce yourself to the instructor before, and we can modify anything. But yeah, absolutely, all levels, all abilities, well done for all. And that's a great point because sometimes you walk into the gym and maybe you've had a surgery or you've got a chronic illness. Oh, yeah. uh, something doesn't feel good. My knee hurts when I do this. Guess what? In yeah. your everyone gets <laughs> that. So yeah. when you look around, you might not We're see all what's old, going on. <laughs> and even young people, so you young yeah. people, so you may not see it. But whether it's anxiety or stress or anything, there are a lot of things that you can't see. But we're all dealing with something, and it's a really supportive community here, and there's always something that we can do that's going to feel good for your body. That's wow. my family one. Oh, for sure. Get that. For sure. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know if we said, but your membership, all uh, when you pay for that monthly membership, all group fitness is included in that. Oh. So you don't pay extra. So no extra for that class? No extra? You, a flat fee? Uh -huh. For group exercise yeah. classes, so yeah. your karate, um, yeah, anything yeah. specialized like that, absolutely 
yes, one-on-one -on -one personal training, but a group class at Maria's Cadence wow. class, if you're looking to run your first 5K, Amazing. she is a one-on-one -on -one run coach. So if you've got some blocks run goals or if you've got some issues to work around, but yeah, we also have a lot of running community just through. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Terry, you so have a question? I do have a question. Uh, Terry's got a question. Go ahead. So before people sign up or when they're signing up, is there somebody that would help them do an assessment of what would be appropriate for them? Especially you, you spoke of surgery, et cetera. Is there somebody they should talk to to get maybe some kind of direction? Ah. <laughs> I will guide you in the right direction, and I'll probably stop you if you're not coming in regularly. Okay. And I'll email you or call you and say, hey, nice. I haven't seen you, I miss you. So it's, a, it's definitely like a family here. We look it out is. for each other. Great. And we question when we don't see our regulars here. So okay. if you are signing up and you don't know where to begin, we'll help you get there. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Really nice. All right. So yeah, this is our one of our biggest videos. I was gonna say, take my money, please. No. <laughs> Thanks, Bye ladies. Bye guys. Bye bye. Again, All if right. you're if you guys are just tuning in, this is the 14th annual Food Drive for Fish live in the ONTV studios and live at Great Lakes Athletic Club with uh, Township staff Aaron, uh, Chelsea, and Jenny giving us a live tour via Great Zoom tour. of nice. the new facility over there. And uh, again. Get those donations in. We need those food donations. Okay. Help us fill our uh, truck uh, all this week. We're here Monday through Friday. Today's Tuesday, the second day of the food drive. And we'll get this special presentation, this live feed of uh, Great Lakes Athletic Club, the new purchase by Orion Township. So fun. So informative. Wow, I had no idea. So. All right, so now we have the amazing track that is a great amenity, especially in these winter months mm -hmm. when you don't want to be walking outside. <laughs> well, I hear, I mean, a lot of people love running on this. As a really good like events. Yeah. It's a lot easier on your knees because, yeah. like I said, we all are mm -hmm. in the winter nice. now, and we have to protect our joints and our bones and it all that. Yeah. You know? So yeah. this is definitely much nicer than outside. To me. Yeah, and I mean, you are getting some windows now for, like, coming in as you're running. I mean, that's an idea. That's a one of the nicest tracks I've seen. But you can look out over the basketball floor. You get like the other activity yeah. that's going on. So you can hold yeah. the people watching the ball so you're protected from the Fun. elements outside. Like, yeah, I mean, you can have a nice environment. Play basketball down there while you're walking the track. I mean, that's yeah. like, oh, it's been a month, but you just yeah. feel like you can get out and out. Yeah. So you can, um, I did, we haven't mentioned this, but if you don't want to sign up for that full commitment of a membership, we do have day passes. Yeah. Oh, so you nice. today you can pay 10 bucks and you can have the full access nice. to the all the amenities here for the entire day. You can like leave, come back. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, you're paying for the full day. Oh, so wow. that's $10 for residents, $12 for non-residents. So let's say you just wanted to check okay. it out, feel it out, see if you really like this type of atmosphere mm -hmm, for working right. out. Not See, that and that feature, you guys, is really nice because in the past, if it was a private gym, oh, you, yeah, you, you yeah. might be able to get a preview, sneak peek, and, and yeah. then that's it. And you signed up and so you might not have, like it. Yeah, right? and having it as a community center, right. community, you know, right? It's, it's, it really is community-based. Yeah. So yeah. you can come in, you yeah. get a day pass, and that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very affordable. I think prior to us taking over, it was $25 for the day. So knowing that yeah. we wanted our residents to feel it out, okay. we, yeah, we made it much lower. And so much more. Nice. And that also gets you access to the pool. Oh, We're going to yeah. see a little bit later, yeah. too. Oh, yeah, we haven't so. even talked about the pool yet. Uh, I was gonna oh, we haven't even talked about that <laughs> yet. The pool is like the number one amenity. Yeah. I just want to say really quick, I'm really impressed with Aaron because I really just wanted to walk the track. He's walking he backwards. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you. Well done. <laughs> well, I have to hire him here at Owen TV. He's doing better than I would. Yeah. Nice backwards. Table. It's all backwards. <laughs> <laughs> still. We're coming into one of our smaller rooms. This is a carpeted room. This is a functional training studio here. Yeah, we don't have to. I mean, we can go ahead. We can full tour. Full tour. Um, let's go. Can, like, as a way. member, stretch in here. There's way mirrors. In. Um, like we said, you have full access to the building, so every door is open for you. If you just needed a private space, you feel like it's a little overwhelming out. Oh, you just yep. lost the signal. All right, our signal's getting a little choppy. I think we're, uh... oh, you're back. Good. Okay, that must have been that right there. I, I, so, I, to be, you got, I, to be so honest, you guys, I'm surprised it is actually holding. Yeah, it yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. We're actually seeing this whole thing. I'm yeah. just so thrilled. 
Wow. Platform Love class is happening in wow. here. You would never know it's that large when you're just, it, it, just it driving It really by. kind of blows your mind, yeah. the size yeah. of it. And if you've never been in, I mean, that used yeah. to be the old IGA. I used to go grocery yeah, shopping there right. 25 years yeah, ago. Me too. <laughs> and they converted it and added on, and it's just massive. It is huge. huge. I don't think some residents don't get an idea of how large have this no, is. Had no idea it was that large. Funny story, I used to work at IGA when I was a kid. Did you? Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything comes full circle. It's crazy. Yeah. That's pretty wild. <laughs> sure does. So taking a right, I know we're going to head to the pools. Or, or we have well, racquetball and squash. Oh, my goodness. And then the pool. Iconic spot. Oh, I see that. And this is the yoga studio. Yoga studio. Wow. Oh, my goodness. We were talking about we're that earlier. We're seeing more space down here. Um, but like Chelsea said, we're going to pop it through the spa really quick. This is a love. Which they do have a separate entrance in the back as well, too. They can yeah. access them without even coming into the gym. They used to have a spa, yeah. Oh my goodness. Used to give uh, massages oh, and gosh. get your soaker <laughs> on, right? <laughs> oh, losing the signal, you guys. You I, I don't know if they can tell we're losing we're the signal slightly. Oh, it's catching up. We're open to the public. Oh, we lost them. Uh oh. Right it's now. still Where there. All right, let's pop back on. Yeah, it's too deep. I, I think too far into the building. It's, that building is that big. <laughs> All, right. All right. Hey, we're back. We're back. Yep. That's how I'm big back. the building right. is. Okay. <laughs> I guess, yeah, those couple of spaces are dead today. I'll just those next time. Well, yes. we are going to go take a look at the pool now. I'm super last. excited to show you guys. You could spend the whole day there. And, oh, and, easily. Yeah. And not catch everything. The way members would go. Yes. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Yep. So we're going the back. Yeah, so we're taking the long way around. But this will also give you a sneak peek at the outdoor, the outdoor pool. pool too. Oh, goodness. So many times I've seen on Facebook lately, people asking, where is, where is there a public pool that they can go to? Because mm -hmm. everybody's ready for it. Oh, yeah. So this is it. My goodness. Why would you not want to go there? Well, and, you know, the, oh. like, like Oregon High School has a pool, but it's... Restricted on uh -huh. time with sure. the uses during the school year. This is and not quite as big. Right? You can pop. No, no. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right, right. And, Same with Brandon. And with the outdoor pool, I believe it's six lanes as well, 25 oh, yards, oh. and um, a water goodness. slide. Uh, I think there's a zero depth, or it's a nice and shallow for the kids to go in, and uh, there's deck chairs and. You name it, it's out there, and it looks like it's covered currently, of course, because of the winter months. Mm -hmm. But sure, uh, we have our lifeguard here best. trying to let us in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it is a really nice pool, and the opportunities for swim classes in the summer for mm -hmm. uh, swim teams and that sort of thing. Sure. And for little kids. So, of course, we just tested this gate right before we came out here. And <laughs> now that we're on the other side of it, um, but here's the outdoor pool so you guys can see. I know everyone loves the slide, the yep. diving board. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful space. I mean, it, it is a full functioning 25 uh, yard pool. And Six yeah. lanes. Yeah. I, is it six lanes? I believe uh, they had some swim teams in the summer over there years ago. Swim lessons, the whole bit. And keep the swim teams up to par. Are there any lanes out here in the outdoor pool? So in the summertime, when the summer pool is open, we have zero depth entry over here okay. where the little ones can mm -hmm. play. Um, obviously, there's the water slide there, and then we have a couple of lanes, usually for the adults or kids who want to try and swim laps and are able to, as well as the diving well where there's diving boards and diving allowed. Wonderful. Very cool. It, it, it is Where really is nice. Inside, and we'll take a peek at the pool from Thanks. here. <laughs> so, talking to my director, Joey, how are we on time? We doing all right? Joey, can you hear me? How are we doing on time? Six minutes. We've got about six minutes left. Awesome. And you, I Perfect. think that's going to work out perfectly. Yeah, this will work out perfectly. So yeah. you guys can get a view of the pool. I bummed we can't get in there right now, yeah. but you guys can still see it and get the idea. So they have aquatics classes, right? They have oh, yeah, aqua fit, 
um, arthritis, those types of classes for the 50 and over population. But then we have a lot of families with time. Um, another thing you can just go on our website and look at the hours for the pool. But uh, open to the public. I don't know. Yeah. That one might not be weird. But no, it, it's, it's actually like, working pretty good. <laughs> oh, oh so yeah, five to five to um, six most days on the weekdays, and then twelve to six Saturday and Sunday. Just depends. We also have an agreement with Swim One Hundred and One, so they do all of our swim lessons. They also have a travel uh, swimming program as well, Ooh. so they rent the pool some nights during the week to have the kids do those lessons. Um, but also, it's an amazing amenity. We're really excited about the future of this part of the, the building because we know it's this is the main reason why the community wanted a recreation center was a pool. So we're and, happy that we can and, finally and say we have that. I'll say this too, you guys. So the Parks and Rec Department puts out surveys to the community. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this yeah. is a direct result based on feedback from the residents, right? So mm -hmm. it, it, this is a, a great example of listening Community. to the residents, what Input, are you interested in, right. what amenities are you looking for, mm -hmm. and the township staff doing a fantastic job always trying to find solutions to those requests. And this is kind of a once in a lifetime type yes. of opportunity to pull a facility mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. off the market and bring yeah. it into the community, right? Mm -hmm. It was an amazing thing to be able to purchase. And what was absolutely incredible was that no taxes were raised in order to purchase this. So I don't think uh, that can be stressed enough is that right. taxes were not raised and we were able to get this. Like wow. in order to build this on our own, we would have never been able to do that. Mm -hmm. Especially for the amount that we got this for. Mm -hmm. There's no way we could have duplicated yeah. this. Yeah. Right. So to get this what we did, we are very incredibly lucky. Yeah. It's truly awesome to be proud of All right. So the last stop on this little tour is gonna be Three minutes. Theater and Co. Cafe. Yeah, the cafe has been there a long time. Our director Joey used to work there uh, mm -hmm. years <laughs> ago. <laughs> so this is open to the public. So you don't have to have a membership. They can have a separate entrance if you don't want to come in the main gym entry. And so all this, this information, <laughs> can all this information be looked up online as well? Yep, and on their Facebook page as well too. So you okay. can find all of that on there. But okay. you can come in here for meetings. You can come in here if you want to just work for the day, use the Wi Fi, oh. something else. They've got such a good travel Sweet. menu. They just lowered their prices. So, Very nice. And Sweet. a lot of our opinions here, they're like some national chains, but even better and cheaper. Family oriented. <laughs> <laughs> There's three local veterans who own and operate this business, which is oh, awesome. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Very um, nice. They're very community focused. So here, take a look, show them the menu, show them what they've got. All right, we've got about two minutes left. Look at that. I mean, it's it's changed yeah. it's changed so much since I saw the pre-pandemic and it's connected right mm -hmm. and there's there's Beautiful. a public entrance. Like Jenny is saying, you don't have to worry about having a membership. Being you can member. come in and, and take Part in this fantastic uh, nice little, uh, it, you know, nook place. across the side, grab some coffee, grab some munchies, <laughs> and do a nice job. And um, I can't thank you guys enough, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, you got to squ squat yeah. down there. Uh, so, Aaron, Jenny, Chelsea, any parting uh, information you'd like to share? Because we are wrapping up here in about 60 seconds. Uh, we can't thank you enough for taking the time to do this. Just say, come and check. Check us out. Absolutely. We'd love to give you a tour. We have sales team here. Um, most hours that we're open. So if you're interested, they would love to give you a tour. And like we said, a day pass too, if you just sure. don't want to fully commit yet. So yeah, we'd mm -hmm. love to see you out here at Wow. Yeah. Come along with us on our journey. It's going to be a fun uh. one. <laughs> And, uh, and, we won't disappoint, I and, it, and it's just starting, right? I mean, yeah. uh, maybe a month you guys own the place, yeah. <laughs> right? So it's just beginning. And so um, nice. as we've seen with Parks and Rec uh, over the years, they've done fantastic job mm -hmm. across our community with everything that's available to the residents uh, from outside sports, fields, you name it, Aaron and the crew, they do a great job. And uh, we can't thank you enough for taking the time to share this exclusive little tour you guys and we'll see you soon um i know we see you guys around the studio so take care and uh, we really appreciate it thank you, uh, thank you. For having us. donate 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 yeah, absolutely yeah
Donate to the food drive. Uh, that was uh, the crew at the Parks and Rec uh, live on Fantastic. the ON TV 14th annual food drive for fish. I think our next programming element, we hope, is going to be <laughs> the live newscast from Lake Orion High School. So, uh, how are we doing? Uh, are we close to that or I, I don't, th t zero minutes? I, what is, you can say it out loud, Steve. <laughs> 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay, well, let's wrap this up. We're going to head over to LOHS to see a wonderful kids in action, the broadcasting department. We're hands in hand in hand with those guys at Dragon Broadcasting. Mm -hmm. So take a look Dragon. at the newscast for today yeah. at LOAM at Lake Orion High School, live as it happens. Take a look. Coming up on today's LOAM, the upcoming scheduled deadline, some information about service learning opportunities, and a new episode of Question of the Week. Stay right there. And don't go anywhere because this is LOAM. Good afternoon, Lake Orion. Today is February 6, 2024. I'm Melina Kazneri, and once again, I'm joined by my amazing co-anchor, Nina Brewer. How are you doing today, Nina? I'm great, Alina, and I hope you're having a great day, too, because we have an exciting show today. Would you like to kick us off once again? I'd love to. Today is the day for current freshmen, sophomores, and juniors to submit their course requests for the next year. If you haven't already done so, the counseling department asks for you to get them in to Zello by tonight. And remember to follow the application deadlines. If you're applying for leadership or honors television production workshop, those submissions are due today. Next week is Valentine's Day, and a variety of service hours comes with that holiday. This month features many service opportunities related to that. All events are listed under X2Vol in the green Find Opportunities button on your dashboard. The, play, the events that take place this month begin with February in the title. Remember, you are responsible for contacting the person that you're volunteering for, and as a reminder, you get 30 days after the event to log your hours. The link to X2Vol is on the high school's homepage. Now it's time to head over to Ben Redman with sports. What do you have for us today, Ben? Thanks guys, we're keeping it simple today. Just some basketball and figure skating. So sit down and lock in, because it won't be a long one. Kicking us off, the Lake Orion figure skating team recently hit the ice on January 17th. The Dragon Skaters secured a victory for the A and C teams, finishing first, while the B team finished in fourth. LO Skaters Josh Snyder and Caitlin Ballant of the A team led the way to a victory by landing a double triple combination jump and a change of foot combination spin, which led them to finish first place in the jumps and spins category. For the C team, LO skater Olivia Geese helped push the team to a win with a single toe loop jump that took first. She also finished first in the moves and spins category. Congratulations to the C team for winning their first event and getting state contention. And congratulations to the A team for also being in contention for the state championship. Their next event is tomorrow at John Lindell Ice Arena in Royal Oak, beginning at 5 p.m. On another note, the Lake Orion girls basketball teams originally planned to play Kingston two weeks ago on January 23rd, but due to snow days, both games were rescheduled to Wednesday last week. Ryan Bunn was in the fieldhouse to bring us the JV action. The Lake Orion girls JV basketball team hosted the Kingston Cardinals last Wednesday. Both teams started slow, but the Dragons played elite defensively, holding Kingston to just single digits as they led 17-6 at the half. Both offenses started to click in the second half, and despite Kingston's Piper St. George's seven points, the Cardinals got burned by the Dragons 38-19, as Lake Orion's Elizabeth Crawford led both teams with eight, followed by Addie Watlinski with seven. Um, I think we definitely did well on passing and getting to the ball. Uh, we definitely need to improve on our fast break layups and just communication in general. Uh, one thing we did well tonight was, you know, kind of fighting our way through the officiating. You know, at sub-varsity level, you never know what you're going to get with that. 
And I told the girls one of the things about tonight was just kind of getting through that. You know, they had to deal with it. We had calls go our way, not go our way. The inconsistency is tough, but I was proud of the girls fighting through and um, being able to work through that. You know, coming off of a back-to-back -back tough game against Oxford last night, and the girls pulled out a nice win last night. So we weren't our sharpest to start. But you know, like I said, the girls really worked through it, able to come away with a comfortable win. It didn't always feel like it at times, but you know, I'm proud of the girls. For WDBC, I'm Ryan Bunn. The varsity girls basketball team also hosts a Kingston that same night. Kingston is not a school Lake Orion usually plays, but they are ranked among the top five in Division Four, basically making them a tough opponent. Oliver House shatters the backboard with the highlights. In a competitive matchup, Lake Orion's girls basketball team competed against Kingston Cardinals last Thursday here at the high school. The first quarter would start out rough for the Dragons, but with a fast break layup early, Ellie Britt would make it a one-point game. Ellie had a total of nine points that night. The Cardinals would then start to build a lead with the quarter ending with a score of 17 to 10. Now to the second quarter, with the Dragons' offense struggling, Brian Palacek would start the Dragons scoring with an easy lay-in. She had 10 points on the day. The first half would end with Kingston still in the lead, 37 to 17. Midway through the third quarter, the Dragons would showcase some elite ball movement, leading to a three by Charlotte Poplowski, bringing the Dragons' total to 25 to the Cardinals' 43. Poplowski would tally nine points for the Dragons. The Cardinals had a comfortable lead in the fourth, behind number 10, Delaney St. George's 34 points. And then drama would strike on the court. With a minute remaining, the Dragons' coach, Bob Bridges, would be teed up for arguing aggressively with the referees. The game would then end with a final score of 61 to 44. Cardinals taking the victory. Well, you know, listen, we can improve on a lot of things right now. Our defense got to get better. Our offense, we're not scoring right now. You know, we've got a lot of work to do yet, and, and that's that's what it is. Just go back and work. You know, it doesn't get any easier. We got Stony Creek on Friday, and we West Bloomfield next Tuesday. So, it's just a got to get back into the court, get back working, a lot more fundamentals, continue to work through things. That's all we can do. WDBC, I'm Oliver House. The girls basketball teams are back on the court tonight. Freshman hosts Royal Oak at 4 p.m. and JV follows at 5.30 against Birmingham Groves. And Varsity will also face Groves at 7. We'll have a live broadcast of tonight's Varsity game. And to watch that, tune in at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. <laughs> That's it for today, LO. Hopefully you can see me right now. And don't worry, no more jokes. Keep it real. And for WDBC, I'm Ben Redman. Question of the Week is our segment where we ask students at LHS questions that relate to the current world events. Next Wednesday, February 14th, is Valentine's Day, and Ben Shadel brings us this week's edition. What's going on, Elmo? My name is Ben Shadel, and this is Question of the Week. Two Wednesdays from now on February 14th is Valentine's Day. We ask students of Lake Orion what their plans for Valentine's Day are. Uh, I'm going to try and beat the Ender Dragon on Minecraft. Um, I don't really uh, associate myself with uh, the real people. I'm hitting rank tonight. Diamond 1 on Siege. Catch me. Oh, I'm, I'm, no, nah, I'm just staying home. I'm not doing anything. This year, I'm going to go to Target with all my friends, and we're going to go and throw all the stuffed animals on the floor. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to buy every chocolate hard candy I can find, and I'm going to eat it so no one else can have it. You know, it's my mom's birthday, so I'm hanging out with her, going out to eat with her, spending time with her. Uh, this year, I think I'm just going to spend Valentine's with my puppy. You know, she's a little sweetheart. Maybe uh, take her out to dinner, get her some ice cream. Um, I'm taking myself out to McDonald's, like going on a date by myself. Self-love is important. You know, I'm talking about that. Me, you already know, I'm going to be getting Rizzy. You know, I'm going to be seeing what I can do. You know, we're going to see how it goes. Valentine's Day, uh, I'm just really, really just going to hang out with the boys. Maybe play some Madden. Who knows? My mom's taking me out for dinner. We hope everybody has a safe Valentine's Day and has fun. For WDBC, I'm Ben Shadel. Thanks, Ben. It seems like a lot of people have a lot of different plans this Valentine's Day. Nina, what are you doing on February 14th? I might go out to dinner. What about you, Alina? Well, I have practice, but I also might go out to dinner. Awesome. Your seniors of the day are... Allison Grunt. Emmanuel Bobian. Ethan Maki. 
Mandy Quinn, and Emily Reynolds. Tune in on Thursday for a new edition of Off the Record. Both girls and boys basketball. And a new class spotlight. Also, on Thursday, we are airing a very special edition of Primetime LOAM at 8 p.m. As always, tune in at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Have a treasure Tuesday, LO. All right, back in the ON TV studios, uh, a great edition of LOAM at Lake Orion High School. Um, what can you say? That was a live newscast produced by the uh, Dragon Broadcasting students over at Lake Orion High School. They are legends in the community. Uh, that program is uh, in the Hall of Fame in the state of Michigan for broadcasting for high school. They win national, state, regional awards, you name it. Uh, scholarships going out the door to these talented students. And one thing Owen TV and Dragon Broadcasting and Roger Smith, the instructor over at the Lake Orion High School, we have a nice uh, relationship where we work together with the students. They work on basketball games with us, football, act as crew, run cameras, replay machines, and play-by-play. -play. And the great thing tonight, as we're going to share, is our special programming this evening is going to be a live basketball game tonight uh, at Lake Orion High School's Fieldhouse. So tune in. The, the announcers there will be all food drive uh, wrapped in graphics. And um, so a special presentation tonight, live basketball tonight at 7 p.m. right here at ON TV on Comcast Channel 10, AT&T U-verse, Channel 99, and live on our website at orionontv.org and Roku and Apple TV and Amazon Fire TV. So wherever you want to watch us, you can, and you can see the game tonight live at 7. All right, so uh, let's see, where are we at here? Should we talk about collection totals? So we had a great donation um, yesterday of $5,000, which really launched us past our $6,000 goal. Currently, I'm looking at the monitor, $8,200 collected for fish. 100% of all proceeds go directly to the food pantry to help restock those shelves after the holiday rush. We know that uh, the shelves over at uh, fish were kind of picked bare over the holidays, and this is kind of a, a different feel we have over at fish because of the increase in food prices. Uh, the stress on families these days to get uh, produce and meats and other food items on their table. So we heard uh, stories that we've never heard in the 14 years of our food drive that some families were turned away uh, due to uh, the number of uh, food items on the shelves at fish during the holidays. They are actually turned away. So we need to get those uh, funds in and those food donations in if you'd like to donate uh, or if you're in a food emergency, this is very key. Uh, call 248-628-3933 if you are or your family are in a food emergency. Somebody will be there to help you at FISH. It takes no time at all to get the assistance you need. Call right now, 248-628-3933. And uh, over the years, the food pantry has kind of uh, opened up their application process. It used to be a process to get to be a member of FISH. Now that is no longer the case. If you are hungry, you need food, you can get the food. Donate online, visit our website at ori9tv.org, click on the ONTV Food Drive logo, and it'll take you right to our Charity GoFundMe account. And just be aware that there are some fees taken out for every online uh, donation, so just be aware of that. If you don't want to pay fees uh, to uh, the Charity GoFundMe, you can donate in person here at Orion, uh, at the ON TV Studios at the Orion Center, 1349 Joslin Road, right here. You can see our big old truck. If you want to do uh, physical donations, you can do that as well. Uh, the number of food, actual physical food donations is very, very, very low this year. Um, we've only had a couple people stop in with uh, physical donations. Uh, we think that's kind of the temperature of what's happening out in the real world, that the food uh, prices are quite high. So the monetary donations, it doesn't matter how high or uh, how big or how small, 5,000 is like a record for us to have a donation. Uh, but we've also had uh, cash donations as small as $10. So anything you can do to help out those hungry and our community in Orion, Addison, Oxford, and Oakland Townships. Donate to Fish today. We're going to move on to our sponsors. Uh, without our sponsors, we would never be able to reach our collection goal. So take a look at our sponsors for today.
all of us at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. Today's portion of the 2024 Owen TV Food Drive is brought to you by Madison Heights Plumbing and Heating Supply, located at 719 East Mandolin Avenue in Madison Heights. The family-owned business has been serving the Detroit metro area for over 30 years. Madison Heights Plumbing and Heating Supply is supporting the food drive for a second year and is a five-day sponsor. In addition to the ONTV Food Drive, they proudly support other charitable events and organizations, such as Toys for Tots, Bottomless Chest, and St. Jude's Children's Hospital. For more information, give them a call at 248-588-4690 or visit their website, madisonheightsplumbingsupply.com. Northern Wholesale Flooring, located at 118 Indian Wood Road in Lake Warren. Northern Wholesale Flooring has been an active member of the community for over 38 years. They are a returning partner of the ONTV Food Drive and are a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can visit their website nflooring.com. Ohana Wealth Advisory. This is Ohana Wealth Advisory's second year supporting the food drive and they are a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can give them a call at 248-246-8080. Kroger, located at 3097 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township. This year, Kroger is a five-day sponsor thanks to a generous $500 donation to the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Kroger, visit their website, kroger.com, or give them a call at 248-393-0765. Meyer of Lake Orion, located at 1107 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Meyer is a year-round supporter of the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry collecting food pantry donations through their Simply Give program. They are a five-day sponsor of the ONTV Food Drive with a charitable $500 contribution. For more information, visit their website, Meyer.com. M3 Investments, located at 990 North Main Street in Royal Oak. Having a plan that is designed around your goals and financial situation can help you successfully navigate the risks you are likely to face. Whether you're just starting out, thinking about retirement, or just retired, Christine can help. For more information about M3 Investments, you can give them a call at 248-543-3400. Galling Buick GMC, located at 1491 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Galling is a longtime supporter of the food drive, returning this year as a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can visit their website at gallingbuickgmc.com. The North Oakland Democratic Club, chartered by the Michigan Democratic Party, serving the North Oakland County area. The NODC is a returning sponsor for the food drive, giving $200 toward our final goal. For more information about the North Oakland Democratic Club, visit their website at nodcmi.com. And by Costco, located at 400 Brown Road in Auburn Hills. Costco is a returning supporter of the ONTV Food Drive this year. They have given $200 to the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Costco, check out their website, costco.com. On the morning of Friday, January 20th, the local dignitaries were invited to take a sneak peek of the brand new Meyer grocery store located on M24 near Clarkston Road. This new concept focuses on the essentials, allowing shoppers to zip in and zip out. So this building is about 90,000 square feet, and we want to make sure that customers are able to get in and out quickly and still have that value, um, whether you forgot spices or you want to come in and do your entire need for the whole week. So um, not only do we have food and we have fresh, we also have a full pet department, we have baby necessities, and we have our uh, entire HBC area along with a uh, pharmacy and a drive through Meyer broke ground on the new location in January of 2022 on the site where Kmart once stood. The Lake Orion location is one of two stores that opened on January 26th. The other is located in Macomb Township. 
In addition to the Meyer brands you're used to seeing, the stores will have a heavy emphasis on locally made products as well. Uh, we have some local offerings. We have uh, some of them uh, we were highlighting today was Cook's Dairy Farm, uh, Sprout Bake, and Buddy's Pizza. Uh, but we have a lot of local offerings. And again, we're just so excited to be part of the community. We are so appreciative of Meyer. You know, their commitment to supporting local food producers is phenomenal. And I have to give a huge shout out to Mary Kimbrough, who's the store director here. She personally selected my product from a pitch that we were able to do uh, back in last February. Um, and she knew we were here in Lake Orion. She tasted our product. She loved it. And so I'm just very appreciative that she gave us this opportunity to have our product here. And it means a ton to us as a small business that's a startup, you know, trying to get our product out there, it's difficult, you know, it's a big world with all of the big names that are out there. Um, so to have this opportunity means a lot. On Thursday, January 26th, the store opened its doors to the public at 6 a.m. Later that morning, Meyer representatives gathered at the rear of the store to celebrate the occasion with a ribbon cutting ceremony. They were joined by Meyer co-chair and CEO Hank Meyer, the grandson of Hendrick Meyer, who founded the supermarket chain in 1934. Grand openings are always a thrill, but for the last 60 years, the main stores we've been opening have been our big Meyer super centers, for lack of a better term. And at the same time that we love that format and having everything under one roof, we also recognize that people want their groceries conveniently. And it's hard to put those big stores that close together and really serve everybody. So this is a new, in many ways, a return to our roots of a predominantly food store, but with a spectacular grocery and pharmacy and assortment that we think people will love and that will be more convenient to shop for a lot of our customers than our big stores are. The new Lake Orion store is one of more than 240 stores located in six states, with approximately half located in Michigan. Headquartered in Walker, Michigan, near Grand Rapids, the chain pioneered the concept of super centers, combining groceries, clothing, hardware, and more. For more information, you can call 877-363-4537 or visit Meyer.com. In studios, I'm Terry Stiles. I'm from Oxford Community Television. Formerly Orion Neighborhood Television, I used to work here, and I'm with the DDA director from Oxford, Kelly Westbrook, and Kimberly Smith, her right hand person. I'm not sure I know what your title is. Me either, Terry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the right hand person for everybody I know in Oxford, actually. <laughs> Welcome to the studio. We did this last year for the food drive. I don't want to neglect the food drive. It's amazing what they've done mm -hmm. here for our Oxford Orient fish um, food drive or pantry. The food drive is going well as yeah, we might have just heard. Excited to see those Isn't numbers. That That's incredible. Mm. And they, did, they were looking towards 6,000. Yeah. They've already exceeded that. But there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Ian was saying that people um, were turned away last year yeah. because they just didn't have enough so at the pantry. Isn't that something? That is and that's people in our own community. Mm -hmm. So thank you for doing this. Yeah. We're here because of community, and we're going to talk about what you, you're doing for our community in Oxford. But I think it's um, working together with the DDA yeah. down here in Lake yep. Orion. I hate social media and I hate <laughs> my telephone, <laughs> but I forgot my notes and I really want to ask the right questions. But first, talking about social media, you two do a great job in social media. How do you think that's helped the DDA? Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, we all know that social media really is the way to reach so many really people. Is. And we do try to divide it. You know, we have our website and social media, Facebook and Instagram, but then we also are supportive of our papers, not mm -hmm. only in Oxford, the Oxford Leader, but also in Lake Orion. So, mm -hmm. you know, we try to reach everybody that we can, yeah. um, even just putting posters up in businesses. 
is. Mm -hmm. But I think that the nice thing about social media is you really do engage with the audience. They get to know not only us, but also our board members and what we're mm -hmm. doing in downtown, and you get to put some feeling behind it. And I think for us, you know, we're always trying to even just put selfies in our office just to show like, hey, we're You're moms, we're here for the community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're in the office yeah. working long hours trying to make a difference. Well, but that's also social fun too. Yeah, you we are. have to have fun. And you know, that's what's engaging to watch you guys, especially when there's an event and, yeah. and I'm um, thinking of the tailgate party yes. that was, for <laughs> sure. That was good. That was a fun event and that was involving Lake Orion as well as us. Mm -hmm. But you guys are making people real. Yeah. So I, I always say in um, our television realm, we're recorders of history mm -hmm. but it's living history yeah. and that's what you guys are doing with um, the media as yeah, of course all forms of media I'm I'm stuck on Facebook I'm one of those that I'm, okay. I'm not on Twitter I'm that's not our on biggest Twitter. demographic it, 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 it really is different yeah. demographics yeah. right yeah. but you guys are hitting all of us really we're yeah. trying you're getting we're trying to <laughs> expand so our following definitely is on Facebook yeah. the mm -hmm. most that's what we've been the most um, concentrated on growing we find that it is a little bit of a middle age generation more so. Mm -hmm. So we are yes. trying to be better on Instagram, but Instagram is actually younger than our generation. So <laughs> yes, we're learning and with and it. Twitter, besides uh, well, Twitter. Well, we're talking about TikTok. Yes, expanding into oh, TikTok, yeah. TikTok in 24. Yeah. Good yes. Good luck, girls. We have a, we have a strategy. <laughs> yeah. well, so I want to lead on over into, you have created some really cool social spaces in mm -hmm. the community. Yeah. The DDA has yeah. done that. Your board has approved it. You've done grants and we'll get into the grant part of it. But how has the social media brought people to those spaces and are, are those people going to those spaces? Yeah. Talk about the two that you've created yeah. in the last year or so. Yeah, for sure. Well, the first one was Washington mm -hmm. Square, who mm -hmm. I have to give this one credit because she came up with that name. Love it. Um, mm -hmm. I got help. She I got some send, help. Send my friends from my, my uh, think tank group in Lake Orion, we came up with the name together. Very so good. I'm gonna give kudos where yeah, kudos to is Lake due. Orion, but yeah. 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 But it really nice. sparked, you know, having a name for each one of mm -hmm. these public spaces that we create, giving them their own identity. Mm -hmm. And Washington Square was so unique because it's still owned by a private entity but they're letting us utilize it. And the village helped and came on board with us mm -hmm. because they're helping extend that insurance. And then the community oh. really came together to create mm -hmm. that space. Everything there that you see was donated mm -hmm. by community members. Right. Um, Birmingham Seal Coat, now BSI, was mm -hmm. the one that came in and paved it with Ajax. On one of the hottest days, yes. may I yes. say. True. Yes, I didn't pick the day. I'm going to say, I didn't pick the day. They did it. That was just yeah. incredible. Yeah. But right. it's so and nice Oxford to guys. see, yes, a mm -hmm. community space for the community, but it's created by the community. Yeah. And it's even caught on wow. nationally because Main Street National mm. has actually mm -hmm. just asked us to come in in May. Um, our national conference is in Alabama, okay. and we are presenting on that space oh, nationally. Wonderful. So they, yeah. it's been recognized now as just a really unique way mm -hmm. to go about something in a DDA mm -hmm. district and just how we got everybody on board. You don't see, you can see communities that come together, but to see communities invest like they mm -hmm. did into that mm -hmm. space, I think that is something that we have that is very unique to Oxford. Well, and that space is utilized. It is. It's it is. not just a space that was created. Yes. There's parties, just like this party that's going on back here. <laughs> yes. I forgot fun. to we mention, they are there. building a, a garage behind <laughs> okay. us. So that's what that party's all about back there. Those guys are working hard. But um, it's amazing whenever you go downtown, Mm -hmm. that space is being utilized it is. Yeah. And, and then you have another space that you got through grants yes and how did that happen yeah so we applied for two awesome grants Ashley Ross on our board of directors um, this past year was wonderful in helping us to apply for these grants grants are such a difficult process yes. and I don't think people They're realize <laughs> how many hours go into yeah. you know um, <laughs> but fun. you know for us it was a learning curve mm -hmm. and she came alongside us with some of our other board members and what a blessing to have just a team collaboration mm -hmm. like that. So we received um, $50,000 through T-Mobile and then $250,000 mm -hmm. through Consumers Energy. Unbelievable. Yeah. So the two spaces that mm -hmm. we're talking about, Patio, Big O, 
O for mm -hmm. Oxford. I love that. Um, yeah. that one is the space behind red naps that you see. Mm -hmm. So we have lighting up there, cornhole boards, um, the fireplace seating. out there, yep. seating, the murals done by Nick Hotman. Mm -hmm. um, it artist. really is beautiful. Yeah. We're excited mm -hmm. to activate that space this upcoming year with some events. Um, and then the newest one is behind Victoria's, and that's called the Courtyard. Mm -hmm. It's it. a little more mm -hmm. what we like to call bougie. bougie. Yeah, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> that, yeah. that's perfect. Behind yeah. Victoria's, yeah. that place yeah. is bougie, and it's yep. so wonderful to go sit Beautiful. and spend an evening there. Yes, mm -hmm. so, so now yeah, nice. we're tasked with really taking these spaces and activating them mm -hmm. is what we like to mm -hmm. call it. Mm -hmm. So really identifying certain events or things that we can do in those spaces mm -hmm. to make sure that they're utilized. Mm -hmm. One thing that we really wanted to focus on um, just the past three years it's really come about after the M24 project mm -hmm. was utilizing oh, yeah. the back of the buildings mm -hmm. and making Smart. it welcoming because mm -hmm. we have found that 95% of the traffic comes in through the backs of those areas and oh. they were neglected for so long. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, building owners and businesses, they have done a great job keeping up on their buildings and preserving the historic mm -hmm. nature, mm -hmm. but now it's our task to come in with those grants and really, um, you know, Bring add the, the people lighting, in. you know, yeah. add all those unique mm -hmm. things that make mm -hmm. people want to stay downtown. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. And do you want to talk a little bit about how we're going to activate those spaces? Sure. Yeah, one thing I did want to mention though is uh, talking back to the community involvement with the patio, we did have a vote for the that name of, oh, yes. the, of the space. Uh, on so, social media. On social yeah. media, yeah. exactly. So we created uh, Washington Square and then of course we created the courtyard. I think we had some help with that just behind the scenes as well. But um, for the patio, we really wanted to engage the community and get get their feedback as well. And that's what it well where we landed, which was great because we loved that one too. Yeah. yeah. And that's where the Very big fun. O at the end yeah. of Oxford came from. So yep. It was from, never yeah, come it was about. from sure. the community. So yeah. thank you, yeah. community yeah. member yeah. who did yeah. that. But <laughs> um, so the way that we're looking to activate some of the, the spaces, obviously Washington Square, we have our markets over mm -hmm. the course mm -hmm. of the summer mm -hmm. on Thursday evenings. We also have our which car show. Which is the show, same night as the, the concert. The concert. Yeah. So you in the already park. have people in yep. town, we do. so you're utilizing that, you're yeah, taking advantage of that, that's good. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep, the synergy there. And then we have the mm -hmm. car shows on Wednesday, mm -hmm. which we're also going to partner with a wine down Wednesday behind nice. Victoria's in the, car, in the mm -hmm. courtyard, excuse me. And so we'll have, mm -hmm. she'll have specials, wine, little bites, we're going to have some big band type music, oh, Michael nice. Buble, Frank Sinatra, <sighs> Dean yes. Martin, oh, have the, the music back there, have yeah. lighting, have a flight, fire pit glasses of wine, it can just be, Sweet. you know, a, an opportunity mm -hmm. for people to kind of sit back and relax if they're not really interested and in doing the car show. it's all part of social show. district, yeah. which is great. Yes, so right, I was just going to say If you want to go from yep. event yep. to event, you, you can. can do that yeah. too. Right. And then with the patio, I think we're doing the cornhole. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start a Toss and Tuesdays, oh, um, leaning on our friends in Lake Gorion yeah. that have done a phenomenal oh, job a with yes, Cornhole they have. They are professionals mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. here. Yes, <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> well, they yeah. might want to come up and play with us now, teach too, us. because they can Thursdays, teach us. <laughs> you know, it's a different night. But we're looking um, for all these events. We look to partner with our businesses. So the mm -hmm. DDA, mm -hmm. you know, we are more on that government side. Mm -hmm. So we're not party planners. Although um, we do love that piece. We do. We do you're doing piece. a good job with that. Yeah. Thank you. But what we look to do is have our businesses come in, help us create the event, and then we can come alongside mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. A perfect mm -hmm. example of this is the car shows mm -hmm. that Sick Pizza started yeah, two years right. ago. And then we were able to come alongside mm -hmm. them and, and help he's them from with Lake that. Ryan, by the way. And yes, yes. yes. But Scott Miller in Oxford, and he's yeah. very invested mm -hmm. in both communities, yeah. which is mm -hmm. beautiful, which I think we'll get to the Stronger Together partnership in a moment. But yeah. mm -hmm. it's a beautiful mm -hmm. pairing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But really, when we think of the DDA, and a lot of times you see the two of us, but we have the best team oh. of board members behind us. And we're so grateful. There's a huge amount of people back there. Not only do you have your DDA board, but you also have your council behind the, you, which yes, is really yeah. oh, village oh, council is phenomenal. Yeah, and that, the committees, really the volunteers, yes. the business owners, we the building do it owners. We could without all of them. Yeah. So um, you mentioned um, grants and you couldn't do it without the businesses. What, explain to people what the funding is for DDAs. Okay. It's sure. not just grants. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. not a 501c3. It's not just sponsorships. Yeah. So uh, it's actually the businesses are involved in that yeah, as well, well right? So it's the TIF plan, mm -hmm. which actually we're getting ready to renew. Uh, next week we put it in front of council. We'll have wow. a public hearing on February 13th. Okay. 
But it is, it's a 20 year plan and it's really all about, about the development, the infrastructure, the downtown as a whole in our district because, you know, a lot of people don't know, it goes township, village, and then DDA is right, a portion of that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and the TIF is um, tax capture from other entities, mm -hmm. um, including, you know, the township and the library and Oakland mm -hmm. County and things mm -hmm. of that nature. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're funded. I think the thing that people are most, um, interested to hear is our budget is very small for I think what we accomplished mm -hmm. in Probably a year and mm -hmm. it's a, uh, it's under a half million dollars a year mm -hmm. and in that just this past year we gave over a hundred thousand dollars in those micro grants people signage that are coming oh, into yeah, town right. mm -hmm. facade grants so mm -hmm. all the improvements that you mm -hmm. see signage facade um, any type of awnings backup buildings mm -hmm. that is all their businesses are able to come to us it goes through our design committee and then our board for approval. So just in the past three years, we've given over 30 mm -hmm. of those Gosh, grants. Yeah. So, you know, that's a large part of our budget, but it's making such a huge impact. Mm -hmm. Yes, it And is. I think it also makes an impact on now getting people downtown, businesses that want to come downtown. Right. Because we're seeing mm -hmm. a huge, um, yes, we are. We're, it's really, it's been <laughs> awesome and I influx. just get giddy yeah. about it. I we really get, do. The last couple of weeks have been phenomenal in having people express interest in having their businesses in downtown Oxford. Yes. So, and you're not seeing empty storefronts. No. And they're no. filling. And we've had they're those filling. for years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Most communities mm -hmm. did after yeah. Um, yeah. COVID. Yeah. So that's really nice. And I think that the, the I'm going to go back to the spaces that you're recreating mm -hmm. behind those businesses. I think that's drawing interest to the business owners sure. themselves oh, absolutely. because it's hard to uh, have people sit out front mm -hmm, with their 24 so. going oh. right through but it it is creating activity in the back and it's yeah, making people go sure. maybe I do want to put a store mm -hmm. here because look at all those people back yeah. there and people so. walking back and forth I think with the social district you mentioned mm -hmm. I have a funny story so I've lived in Oxford for about five years and my family and I went to go eat at homegrown and we went and pulled up on 24 parked our car and we're like oh it must be like super not busy right now because there's no cars here Wow. had no idea that like everybody parks in the back right oh. so <laughs> we went in and oh, it was yeah. bustling oh, but yeah. we were you know mm -hmm. people don't know that so mm -hmm. you know that's part of mm -hmm. what we want to do is this wayfinding um, yes. area mm -hmm. of, wayfinding, of focus like yes. in 2024 as well as mm -hmm. showing people where do you go to find these things mm -hmm. instead of just driving through and maybe not really catching everything mm -hmm. that we have to yeah, offer right. mm -hmm. yeah we want people to know what businesses we have here where they mm -hmm. are so a big project that we're tasked with this year and we've tasked our board and committees with is doing wayfinding signage throughout mm -hmm. the whole district coming off the Pollyann Trail mm -hmm. coming in from Lake Orion mm -hmm. and then also adding additional crosswalks. Mm -hmm. The walkability yeah. is mm -hmm. so important. Mm -hmm. Safety is so mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we really want to do, you know, it's a little bit harder on 24 because of MDOT, yep. mm -hmm. but <laughs> we can control those things on Burdick Street. Sure. So something that we really want to do is make sure that they're ADA compliant that they're safe and nice. that people can get from point Convenient. A to point B yeah. Yeah. and to Convenient. visit all of our businesses. And you know, I have to say that's what uh, that's something Orion did a long time ago, mm -hmm. years ago, because yeah. they had 24 yeah. bypassing them. Yeah. Yeah. So they did that, this is where we're at. Yeah. Here's yeah. all the signs yeah. and this is what we do and this is yeah. what we have. Yeah. And it's really helped Orion for sure. for sure. And you said something about working with Orion that you wanted to get to together. That stronger together. Mm -hmm. I do, but before that, because we're talking about wayfinding, do we want to talk yes. about the map? I like the Ooh, wayfinding. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you about so that. So this is yeah. a, we are so proud and excited about this project because this was something that we talked about from the first day that I started working yeah. at the DDA about recreating a downtown map, a nice. reference piece mm -hmm. for visitors, mm -hmm. for community members. And so we finally got that printed a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. We have those distributed to the businesses. We have them at the DDA offices. Mm -hmm. We present them at different activities that we're at. On the good. trolley. On the trolley. Mm -hmm. yep. And then we just actually had some very large posters printed that we'll have put in our information centers uh -huh. down 24. Yeah, and we'll good. have like those brochures as well. But it articulates all of the different businesses within the walkable downtown. 
as well as the White House district, all the way down to the south end of our district. And we're just, we couldn't be so more proud of it because it's yeah. just been a labor Bravo. of love. But and every six excited. months, we'll look to update it. Yeah. You know, we have another, I think about six businesses yeah. that are about to One come into downtown. Come in. yeah. <laughs> and so it's ever changing, right? Yeah. But our, our goal is to be able to update that map and have them reprinted so that we're always relevant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it has great information mm -hmm. on there about our downtown gift cards that mm -hmm. has been a huge program for our downtown. That's another new a program. year and a half and we've already sold over thirty thousand dollars so that's thirty oh thousand dollars that are we're in keeping there. right mm -hmm. in the district um, and then it also has the trolley information yeah. on there how you track the trolley things like that mm -hmm. and with which you had so I, I wanted to touch it briefly on uh, the new events that you've created within the community yeah. and that's one of them the Christmas the Polar, the Polar Express. Express. That was How so magical. Yeah, yeah, it really was. Yeah, so we started with ticketed events this year. And ticketed events for us is really to just fund the trolley so that we can run it additional okay. days. Mm -hmm. So or we're not more. really, yes. So we had like, we have little buses as well, like the smaller buses, yes. Noda, mm -hmm. Noda buses to right. help mm -hmm. move traffic and people mm -hmm. back and forth between. And this is another piece of the Stronger Together as we partnered with them on yes. the Polar Express as oh, well. And what a phenomenal event. We both sold out. Oxford so and Ligorian. Yeah. Magical for kids. We got to yeah. take our own it families so on. And, so so fun. and then yeah. we ran a Christmas market downtown yeah. where the trolley pulled up too. So oh, it was beautiful. great for our vendors too. So mm -hmm. it's just, I mean, she'll get tired of me saying it, but I like to say we're a Hallmark movie. <laughs> just waiting get to get, you know, get filmed. <laughs> and you know, it's those true. little things, mm -hmm. they're magical, yeah. right? When you think about kids getting on the Polar Express, we gave them their golden ticket. Oh, you know, the conductor, wow. which was Rad Charles, yeah. our board mm -hmm. chair, um, stamped it on the way. They sang Christmas carols. They read the book. They came downtown and got their cocoa and their bell, mm -hmm. which is really neat. So fun. Got to see Santa once yeah. they arrived. I mean, it was just a beautiful, beautiful day. We had so much positive feedback. Yeah. Just the community coming together yeah. around the holiday season. It was just, it was really incredible. It was a happy season. It anyhow. was. Yeah, it was. Three, we have three minutes. Oh, okay. So tell me, I know, isn't it strong? I know. <laughs> I, love, I love it. I ask you guys one or two questions, and the interview's easy we like for to me. Talk. But I love that. <laughs> um, real quickly, Stronger Together. Yes. Because that's Orion and Oxford has been yes, yes. since. Um, 2020. 2020. Yep, okay. 2021. 21. We implemented it. It's been wonderful. We do everything from our events together to the trolley together. But we are meeting with the Lake Rain team on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Um, with Molly leaving, who's mm -hmm. still our very good friend, yeah. um, even in the interim with Janet there at the DDA, we're just still continuing on. So it's been a great relationship. The biggest thing for us through the Stronger Together is continuing to get these sponsors mm -hmm. that want to be in Lake Orion and Oxford. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's finding a sponsor right now for the trolley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. we need that kind of overarching sponsor mm -hmm. this year. So that is one thing that we're both actively working on. Um, and I'm pitching it out here because I know yeah. people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's in the donating mood right yeah. now. So um, you don't need one big sponsor. You'll take a bunch of little we sponsorships. We will. We will. We'll bring it down there. We would mm -hmm. like one, though, that's mm -hmm. really consistent okay. and activating okay. with okay. us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but really, you know, that partnership, I don't see it ever going away. It is so great. Um, to just have a community that's only 2.3 miles mm -hmm. from downtown to downtown and works so, so well with us. so many times we're one community. Mm -hmm. We really are. I mean, when our heart breaks, their heart breaks. Yep, oh, absolutely. sorry about the mic, you guys, <laughs> and vice versa. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we they cheer us on, whether it's in sports or what we're mm -hmm. doing. Unless we're playing and them football. Or in football. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, thank you, thank you for being here at the Orion Neighborhood Television thank Studio. You for having it's you for it's my us. old home. Yeah. Uh, born and raised here. I'm so proud that we're be we're able to help with the food drive. Uh, if you're interested, go donate for Orion Oxford Fish. You can donate on the website. It's a lot easier, and it's Orion O N T V. Dot org and thank you for joining us today. I'm really enjoying being here. And I'm going to send it back to Ian. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, he's not ready yet. So we're going to give him some time so you can donate to Orion Oxford Fish, sorry, at the um, Orion Neighborhood Television website, Orion Television, ON, or excuse me, Orion ON TV. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> and we're going to a fish, Orion Oxford fish video.
Oxford Orion Fish is celebrating 50 years of serving neighbors in need in Oxford, Lake Orion, Addison, and Oakland Township. The food pantry serves almost 2,000 households every year, which equates to over 4,500 individuals with almost 200,000 pounds of food going out the door. The pantry adapted to get through the COVID pandemic, but now inflation is taking its toll. The high cost of groceries and rent is affecting clients and donations. You know, it tends to ebb and flow. There were months when donations are down and then we look back and think, well, you know, food prices are high. Uh, so, but then the next month, you know, well, donations will be up again, food and monetary donations. So it just sort of ebbs and flows. I think our community is cognizant of the fact that prices are up. So maybe we can give a little more knowing that, you know, Oxford Orient Fish is a big part of this community. I think they're well aware that, you know, it's, we're affected too. So they do give, if that makes sense. Yeah. With inflation, do you find that there's more of a need? Do you find that that affects clients coming in? Yes, yes. I know I had one just the other day saying her rent went way up and her, um, you know, subsidies that she gets for food went way down. So she stopped me at the door. She said, I don't know what we would do without you guys to bridge that gap. So they are being affected. Following the holidays, donations get a little light during the first quarter of the year. That's why ONTV plans its food drive in February every year, and cash donations allow the pantry to purchase meat, dairy, and other perishables. We always have needs, but uh, we manage to fill it. We get a lot of monetary donations too, so then we can purchase whatever we don't get in. Um, and forgot, Harvest has been huge right now. They're delivering us a lot of really great products that we wouldn't be able to have. Produce, meats, a lot of fun stuff. Everyone from board members to staff volunteers their time and they depend on community groups and individuals to help keep the shelves stocked. Without the community support, it would be a completely different thing here. I mean, they're, we're well known in the community, so they donate money, they donate food, they participate in the food drives, they put it in our drop box. Um, when we have special events, they'll sign up, like we were just talking about, to see if they can come help at a food, you know, at a sorting thing after a food drive. It's our community is huge, and they also know about us, so they can spread the word if they, you know, find someone who might be struggling, or a neighbor, or a neighbor's, you know, child, or whatever, and they call here and get them in, and so just the whole network is is wonderful. If you or someone you know is currently facing hardships, don't hesitate to seek out help. Using the food pantry services is like taking a trip to the corner grocery store. I would say call, make an appointment, um, and come in. I mean, people come in for the first time and they're just wowed about, wow, this isn't what I expected. Or they've been to another food pantry where they just get a box of food. So we take them all through, you know, we'll take you through. You can choose what you want for your family. You know, we'll give you a card. You'll know exactly how much you can get. It's, we found this a very friendly atmosphere here. I, once we, people have told us before, they, the first time was hard to come in, but now we just, it's love it. You guys are so kind, you know, it's not intimidating. We don't feel less than, so yeah, I, we think we're doing it good. <laughs> For more information or to volunteer your time, call 248-628-3933 or visit OxfordOrianFish.org. All right, back here in the studio, great video, great interview oh, with so the DDA group. To. Yeah. Right, I mean, they know what they're doing. They're out yep. in the public, they're out in the community. We've seen their social media posts, <laughs> you know, when people have a knack yeah. for certain things yeah. and they really shine, mm -hmm. sharing the information about uh, everything Oxford DDA on social media. So check that out mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, head up to Oxford and I mean, you guys are booming. Oxford's having a great time. <laughs> they still have the trolley. Did, I, I miss. Did you yes, guys? The, the trolley's trolley still is going still on. Still working on. I think Thursday nights. Um, I don't have the the schedule. The schedule, but yes, it's still going. <laughs> but that going was a great addition. It's so fun to hear people say, 
I don't usually go down to Lake Orion on a Friday night for dinner, but I'm doing that now and it's so fun. I didn't have to find parking space or it's really neat and, and, and vice versa. We don't want to get into parking in Lake Orion. Oh That's a goodness. whole well, another week of discussion. <laughs> we're running into the same issue up there now, really? which is fine. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, that Just means because. businesses are booming. Mm -hmm. People are moving right. to town and mm -hmm. it's, it's doing great. So yep. DDA's here in Orion and Oxford doing a great mm -hmm. job for our communities. Mm -hmm. Uh, keeping those tax dollars home to put to good use to help develop the, our uh, villages and to uh, what they are today. So and I stuff. do want to say thank you to Kelly and, and Kim for taking time out of their day. They're passionate about donating to the community and they were really excited when I said, guess what? Can you guys <laughs> come back again this year? Yes, please. Well, so, they'll be a yeah. staple because we always want to hear the update, yeah. uh, what's happening. And, and as you know, the food drive is happening this time of year yes, for a reason, is. but having them in also get you mm -hmm. kind of a jump start of what's yeah. happening in the new year up yeah. in Oxford mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. So mm -hmm. we do have a little bit of housekeeping to do. Why mm -hmm. are we here? We're at the 14th annual ONTV Food Drive for Fish. It is a food and fun drive. Mm -hmm. We had a massive donation yesterday by one of our sponsors sponsors uh, $5,000 to really just bolt us over that collection mm -hmm. goal of 6000 but uh, we are now uh, looking at can we hit 12 can we go to $12,000 <laughs> I think we can well you got a couple days to go we so do. yeah you, yep and that's great. that's good so uh, uh, we have uh, different ways to donate if you haven't done mm -hmm. so you can donate online at orionontv.org head on over to our food drive logo it's right there at the top of the page click on it it'll take you to our uh, food drive website and you can click take you right to the charity GoFundMe you can donate today you, if you don't want to donate via charity GoFundMe and use your credit card as some fees are taken out of your donations if you do mm -hmm. it online with a credit card you can drop your check or cash off here at the ONTV studios at 1349 Joslyn Road at the Orion Center mm -hmm. uh, you can drop it off during our uh, business hours it's 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 10 a.m. to 5 a.m. or 5 p.m. <laughs> uh, what did I say it's not you know 5 p.m. on Friday like right? I know it feels like it uh, but yeah you just hand it to the staff and we'll get it towards the tally now remember 100 percent of all cash donations go directly to mm -hmm. fish mm -hmm. if you don't want to you know, offer cash up we've had donations of 10 bucks all the way up to five thousand wow, dollars so yeah. the, it uh, every little bit helps mm -hmm. and if you like to donate physical items these are some of the items in need and they are canned pineapple canned mandarin oranges chili beef stew sloppy joe mix ketchup and mustard of course canned chicken chunky soup of any kind, baked beans, taco shells, cake mixes, and feminine products. And we talked about toiletries, toothpaste. shampoos, yeah. soaps, toothpaste, right. and toothbrushes. Yeah, tissue, stuff like that. Absolutely, and make sure that all of your donations are not opened or expired or damaged. Mm, we will have right. to discard those items. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Remember, you're donating foods people mm -hmm. to eat. We don't want to get anybody sick. and. Right. Uh, Donate things that you would eat as well because, Absolutely. you know, if yep. you're not willing to, we don't want a rusty can of green beans. We've yeah, seen right. that in the past and we're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, no thanks. Uh, it's just not safe to eat. So. And that's going into, you can donate that to the van. The yeah. doors are open, right? Yep. Thank you. I always yeah. forget Monday that. We, Friday. We've got the big van. <laughs> uh, you see the graphic on the screen, our big Orient TV uh Orion on TV production van with our website on it. You can't miss it. It's huge. The door is open. Drop your food items off uh, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. And we'll collect those uh, items and uh, distribute them uh, to fish to restock those shelves. Mm -hmm. You can even, during business hours, if you if you can't make it out to donate those physical items, Owen TV is a year-round drop-off mm -hmm. location mm -hmm. for fish. So we have a uh, donation bin in our vestibule and you can come on in mm -hmm. and drop stuff off. And we want to also call attention to Northern Wholesale Flooring. Yes. They're one of our long longtime mm -hmm. sponsors. And um, you know, Matt was here, Matt Pfeiffer was Such here a as a guy. co host. Yeah. Guys everywhere. Yeah. He's, he's phil uh, philanthropy is his middle yeah, name. If somebody needs something, Matt is always the first one on the list to say, I'm here. Or he knows Whatever who to call. Need. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Northern, they, they are also a drop off location for food items year round. And you can yes, do it 24 yeah. hours mm -hmm. a day. So they actually have it open mm -hmm. uh, to the public. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's great. Get those things in. I'm looking over here. Hey, did I plan that or what? We have a video about Northern <laughs> Wholesale Flooring <laughs> and why they sponsor the food drive and the different uh, things they do in our community every day. Here's a video. Uh, 
the history, well, it was uh, back in uh, 1985, uh, Northern was founded, um, and uh, I purchased it um, in uh, early 2004. So it was uh, almost 20 years old when I purchased it. And uh, that puts us at, uh, what if I have that right, 36 years, I think, uh, 36, 37 years now that uh, Northern's been serving uh, the uh, Orion uh, community as well as surrounding communities. Times are changing, and uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in that if we don't change with them, um, then uh, then we're going to be left behind. And so, uh, yeah, you know, when I bought the store, it was uh, located there in uh, the plaza next to OPA, uh, which is uh, that plaza is most known for. And, um, and we were there for a long time. Um, and then um, I had the opportunity to buy a building on 24, which I, I did with the, uh, the intention of going to a, a more full service, high end, kind of a destination flooring store. And the reality is at the same time I was doing that, the industry was changing. And the industry was changing to a lot of online sellers and to uh, the big box stores. Uh, really the strength of the big box stores has become um, very challenging for independent retailers. And many independent retailers went away. So at that point, uh, I made the decision to change up the model. Um, and it was painful because I we had a beautiful space there and um, still that great reputation. But um, I, I believed that we needed to, uh, to evolve. And now you know, the great thing is with the floor trader, the addition of the floor trader, we have a lot more space here. We have uh, over 100,000 feet of flooring in stock and we have better buys than anybody. I mean, any big box store, um, when it comes to quality for price, there is nobody that can touch us and especially our independent uh, retail friends and, and big box and you know the Costco's and all of them. So we've created a destination that gives uh, customers what they need regardless of what end of the spectrum they're on in terms of their needs for flooring. And, um, and I couldn't have done that in that location. So as much as it hurt, uh, we, we did what we had to to be relevant uh, for today's customer. And they're, they're why we're here. So if we aren't changing for them, then I think uh, that we're making a mistake. Um, I love what we do and we're proud of our business. But the reality is um, uh, I'm a believer that it is our responsibility as a business in a small community to, um, to take care of our community. And, um, and so, you know, we started uh, many, many years ago with um, a few efforts, like we used to do packages for the troops when the, uh, we had a lot of people overseas, and we did that in honor of one of our locals that uh, passed, uh, Raymond Plower, who uh, was, uh, lost his life in the, the conflict in Iraq. And, uh, and, and so back in those days, we were there for that family, and we, became, we built a partnership with them. And then it just kind of evolved to any time there was a need, we tried to jump in. And, and quite frankly, I spend uh, um, way more of my time doing that at this point personally than I do on our business. And I leave that to our staff, uh, which is, uh, you know, we're real proud of them as well. Um, but the reality is there's a lot of needs. Um, we also are collecting food for, for this food drive. And I'm looking forward to being a part of that as well and helping to make sure that you guys meet the goal. Um, so there are so many needs needs in our community and, and I'd say more than more than ever at least it feels that way and so um, we uh, we believe it's our responsibility and duty to be a part of that and, and quite frankly we encourage um, all of you out there uh, to patron the businesses because when I when I do anything in charity we reach out to all my local business friends and there are many of them that come through time after time after time and are here for us to help us be able to take care of people when they're in need in these tragedies. And um, I would encourage you to, to follow me, follow what we're doing in those businesses and support those businesses in the community. Because the reality is, if, if I didn't have those businesses to lean on, I couldn't do what we do as a team here and as a team in the community to help others. So we, we need businesses that give back and um, we just uh, really encourage our, our locals to keep that in mind when you're making purchases. If you're buying from a big box store, not that they're bad people, but they probably aren't doing a lot in our local community. And, uh, and there's a lot of businesses that, you know, don't focus on the community. And we just think that uh, your money would be better spent in helping those that help make our community the great, amazing place that it is. You guys need to drive up here with some food, better yet, drive up with some cash. And if you're a company, you need to call in and you need to, you need to donate some money to help keep this food pantry stocked for all of our guests. So I challenge all of you, join us in this fight. And, uh, and if everybody does a little bit, it's really not that challenging. And we can, we can do uh, great things together. 
All right, great video about uh, Matt Pfeiffer yeah. and his business, Northern Wholesale Flooring. And as we were watching the video, mm -hmm. we're talking, I go, boy, flashback to uh, the pandemic and oh, COVID. Gosh, yeah. uh, what we saw with the Forgotten, Forgotten Harvest, Harvest video, yeah. uh, that was the location during the pandemic. Yeah. Right now, Mondays uh, is when Forgotten Harvest still mm -hmm. arrives and drops off food for those in need. And uh, Matt was sharing with us yesterday that it is now over at Canterbury Village. Yeah, by right? jo so, on Joslyn. Correct, yeah. and Joslyn mm -hmm. Road, just down from mm -hmm. Owen TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're hungry, just show up, get in line early, and mm -hmm. they just, they have box for you to get you some food. And uh, the numbers have been steadily going up, mm -hmm. um, which we saw, but they the good have. thing is, they always say there's leftovers. There's always boxes of leftovers, and right. years ago they used to bring them to us here uh, at the studio and uh -huh. we're like we have no place for this, this? <laughs> so they started a food pantry there on site at oh, they Canterbury did. Village. Yes. Oh, okay. So that's it's good it's small. Know. It's in, mm -hmm. in in its infancy, but that's where the le the nice. uh, leftover boxes okay. go, so it can be distributed at a later date. Okay. So but they can just show up. People can just show up. They yes. don't have to register. No, uh, and, all that. and w that is the North Oakland hub for uh, Forgotten Harvest. Oh, so is it's it? a major okay. spot for mm -hmm. North Oakland wow. uh, County if you're hungry. You can wow. go grab something on Monday. Wow. Um, we were talking about volunteers. Uh, while the video is going on, you brought it up. Yeah. Remind me, our volunteers over at Fish. Volunteers for Fish, they are, they've been there a long time. Yes. A lot of those faces are really familiar. They'll take volunteers for anything to stock the shelves. You don't have to deal with people if you don't want to. You can stock those shelves. You can bring that food in because yep. somebody's got to do it. Yep. And that's a lot of lifting. Um, there's <laughs> it is. women there that are going to help with that, whatever you need. Uh, and I okay. know that they even help um, d direct them to other help, like paying their utility bills, et cetera. Orion Oxford Fish does not do that, or Oxford Orion Fish. They don't pay the utility Correct. bills, but they help. They network. They know they where know everybody is at, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we do have a, a graphic of uh, Fish's website. Oh, so we can get yeah. that information yeah. up. Um, that oh, there's a, or there it is. OxfordOrientFish.org. Yeah. Um, it's easy mm -hmm. to go on. You can find out uh, their mission, uh, how many people they help. We know it's about a um, hundred families mm -hmm. a week. I think it is yes. two hundred individuals. Yes. It, you say a week. It's amazing the number. Of that's and, and not just a hundred people. That's families. Well, yeah. yes, exactly. And yeah. let's say we get to twelve thousand dollars. Hint, <laughs> we're trying to get to $12,000. <laughs> if we get to $12,000, this money raised for fish, mm -hmm. it, it, we, it may be last a month. Oh, yeah. If right. we're lucky, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. another food drive right after it. Mm -hmm. um, so they have them all lined up. But yeah, so the more we have now, the more mm -hmm. it helps them buy fresh produce, mm -hmm. fresh meats, mm -hmm. Milk uh, dairy, yeah. you, you name it, right? Yeah. So that's, that's a good stuff with fish. So mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. here. It is community day. We had the uh, DDA in from Oxford, but we're also community, right, yes, Terry? Uh, OCTV, on TV. we are community mm -hmm. nonprofits working mm -hmm. here in our communities to bring media and information to all of our viewers and residents. Uh, how much time do we have? We, uh, about eight minutes, just under eight minutes to talk about us. And we're more so community or in neighborhood television in Oxford than ever before. Yes. Because we're able now, we're streaming this particular <laughs> program, we're streaming it into, thanks to you, into the Oxford community. So Oxford and Addison, who are also affected yep. by food from Oxford Orion Fish um, are seeing what you guys are doing here yep. and that this is your 14th year doing this <laughs> and thank you for inviting us to belong and, and to be part of this. We really know working it. together, having partners mm -hmm. makes you stronger. Sure does. Right? It, right. It, um, there's knowledge on this side, there's knowledge on mm. your side and you teach me something every time we sit around <laughs> and chit chat. And so nice. I hopefully I can teach oh, you and right. Yeah. So we've known yeah. each other a, a mm -hmm. long time mm -hmm. and uh, working yeah. with your staff and uh, our missions are basically the same, right? Yeah. It's right. it's uh, communicate with the media, give mm -hmm. uh, our residents and uh, free speech opportunities right. to uh, come in and express yourself. We have classes here at ON TV. Mm -hmm. um, OC TV doesn't. Do you guys don't really hold public classes, we do, do you? Not. No, right? we've, we've offered many, many times in the community. Um, it's just getting that 
feed from, I, I know you get a feed from um, Orion, from the high school. We do. You get a lot of students, and we're working on that. Yeah. We're working now partnering with the high school. Which that is hasn't great. happened in years. Yes, it is. Which is great. Because you, you, you have a more volunteer base, and we have. Um, you have all, more paid staff. Paid based. staff yeah, right. it's it's a different type of <coughs> model, but the same mm -hmm. goal is mm -hmm. uh, sitting right. there. And our funding is the same. Uh, our funding is the same. <laughs> Let's talk and about I'm gonna that. And I say, a unfortunately, <laughs> uh, yeah, so threatened. if you don't know, our funding f uh, for our budgets are not done through tax dollars. Uh, it yeah. is if you have c uh, traditional cable mm -hmm. TV, Comcast, Spectrum, all those guys, a portion of that fee, about seven percent, comes back to the community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And those funds then help fund studios like mm -hmm. ours right. and yours. Right. So what we're running into is everybody's moving to streaming services, mm -hmm. just like we mentioned. Mm -hmm. We're on those streaming which services, yeah. which we have to be. That's where the mm -hmm. eyeballs are. Mm -hmm. But when people move from traditional cable, our funding goes down. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. we're going to bring up uh, HB 4965. It's a nasty bill yep. that came uh, uh, about by Netflix uh, here in Lansing trying mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. exclude all uh, streaming um, companies from having to pay into the traditional cable TV model, which we know which those streaming guys look just like cable TV. And they're doing that. Uh, the franchise fees are, are uh, th those streamers and everybody else are using our, our easements, right our, our right rights of ways. Correct. And that's kind of a rent. The, fr the franchise fees are rent for using those rights of ways, but also to help us maintain them. Yes. Because they're not going to maintain them. No. But this, the Roku and Apple and all those streamers are also using those easements any and they're not paying for correct them. any electronic delivery from telephones mm -hmm. to yep. cable to mm -hmm. use our public right away and we like to say it is rent it is rent it is to rent. pay the community mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. using yeah. our public land our property <laughs> for commercial gain and now and that's being yes. threatened because that bill is in the senate right now correct. the michigan senate um, so that stating that they won't have to pay those franchise fees, yes. but they are not a video delivery service, which they're. Does that make sense <laughs> at all? Not at all. And it's minimum dollars. So yep. a lot of the, the lawmakers are like, yeah, but we don't want to tax our tax our payers more. Number one, it's not a tax. Number two, it's minimum dollars compared yep. to what communities will lose. And especially communities like in our northern Oakland County yep. that are keeping those funds. They're not yep. giving them to television stations. And they're going to lose millions of dollars yep. per year. We know that it's a roughly $150 million statewide from those fees That's that are collected huge. that could be lost. That we'll lose. And uh, friends of ours in Ann Arbor who run a station over there, they told us that their funds go towards partially to run their studio, but the city is also using it to build an election center for safety and security. Yeah. And so it's a, a modern facility to conduct safe elections. Right, so it's still uh, helping the They didn't the know that this money could go away, oh, so gosh. they're planning on it. Southfield already planned no their idea. budgets, had no mm -hmm. idea that this potentially could go away. And Detroit, too. I and was, Detroit as well. And Detroit, yeah. and that's millions of dollars. Yes, it, it is. And in here in Orion, we're talking maybe $700,000 a year. That's uh, a it, That we don't use all of it to fund mm -hmm. ONTV. Um, but, yeah, it's just... Do you value what we do here? Do we give back to our community? Yes. Our, oh, we gosh. exist to help serve our community. And and they they uh, small public access stations were started in the first place to be relevant to the community. Correct. So the community gets relevant information. Yep. You're not going to hear Detroit saying, <laughs> "Guess what's going on in the <laughs> DDA <laughs> in Lake Orion or Oxford." Right. Um, I, I, you're not going to get that information if we no. lose our funding. And we have two minutes left, so yeah. I, I can say too, COVID <laughs> during the pandemic, yeah. our services, our community media centers, oh my goodness, were so instrumental in mm -hmm. trying to get information out to the community. Yeah. Uh, where can you get mm -hmm. safe food? Where can you get mm -hmm. uh, trips to the doctor? Where can you? We had somebody here in the township who had a busted well. How do we get that information out to the community yeah. and share all the unfiltered, right, unfiltered. Uh, real true messages from your local government We're the front in an emergency? Of the community. Yeah. Nothing is edited. Mm -hmm. Nothing. We right. we are local news. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Channel Seven didn't come up and mm -hmm. say, "Hey, this what do you is, need? Go to One TV right. and grab this, or go to the Orient Center and grab yep. this." So. Uh, we are yeah. here. You're going to hear more of Community Rah Rah because uh, that's we what we it. are here. <laughs> Don't forget tonight, uh, live sports. 
Uh, 7 p.m., the, the varsity girls basketball uh, takes to the hard court at Lake Orion High School. Go so Dragons. tune in for that, and they'll be part of the Food Drive primetime programming. We're here all week. Uh, we hope to see you again here tomorrow. I'll see you again Friday. Friday. Terry's coming back mm -hmm. Friday to okay. close out the week. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, uh, all week we're here. Friday closes out. So get those donations in, orionontv.org. Get those donations in. There's a look, $8,300. We want to thank NLCC for donating 100 bucks that came in mm -hmm. while we were nice. in the interview with the DDA. Mm -hmm. And we're going to say goodbye for now, and we'll see you tomorrow at noon for another lunch break. Take okay. it easy. Donate, donate.